Hey everyone, it's been a while since I've done a live stream. I've got some checks to do to make sure it's all behaving. I think it's okay. Let me know if the audio is clips or anything. I think it might be clipping slightly actually. Let's just drop it down slightly. All right, see how that goes. No problems before with audio clipping. Hi Paul, how's it going? So anyone that's here watching, um, go to chat, well, be over there somewhere, and um, say hello, so I know who's here. I thought I'd do a live stream, because I haven't done one for a little while. It's been, well, months, actually. I have done a couple this year. Andy Mouse, how's it going? <coughs> oh, oh, I guess I like seeing as the sun's now started coming up. It's pretty early over here. So it's 8 a.m. my time. Hey Ian, how's it going? Hey Ian, I don't know if you notice this. Recognise it? I think you will. I've got myself a bit of a setup here now where I've got some of my cow gear here. So I've got um, my Fluke 5450A. My Fluke 343A, my Valhalla 2703, and then the, the Dash one, which I've just fixed. That's up here as well. So I've got like a calibration setup thing here. Um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I'm still playing with the, the Dash one, making sure the calibrations look okay and that sort of stuff. And I check, I check the um, long term drift stuff like that. I'm just going to keep checking it every once in a while, make sure it stays stable. Cool. You don't? A R E V R V blog. <laughs> What's your name again? I, I I think I did night once. I've forgotten probably. I can still get to the door. Yeah, well, barely. The um, my floors currently covered laptops, so I've got four laptop bags stacked up side by side right now. I'm doing some stuff, charging them all up, that sort of stuff. It's been a while since charging them all up. Each bag's got two laptops in it. It's for the events that I do. Laptops use at events, so I need to maintain them. Dave. Right, Dave. I try and remember that. Dave. Hey, Dan. Cool. So, yeah, I'm pretty much out of practice with live streams. It's been a little while, so, and I'm still trying to wake up. <laughs> That's always fun, trying to wake up as well. Right, so I think I'm pretty much set up here. I don't think I've missed anything. So I've got a MacBook over here I want to try and fix. Um, here we go, sitting right there. I've already pulled the covers off. All right, so I'll play with that. And I may even get to the Datron. Well, I've got a second Datron sitting here, right? Which is, you can probably see just on the top left corner there, standing on the floor, up against the wall, is another Datron. So, that's one I've been working on. I've done a few videos on that one already. Um, how many do I have? Five videos, maybe six videos, already recorded for that one. So, that's going to be... Another big little, a big little, a big um, compilation, I suppose, of, of repairs. So that's going to be another series. It's got some different faults to the first unit, so it's a little bit different. Um, I did find some good things though that the firmware is the same as the original Datron on, I've repaired, and it's also the same as the firmware which was on the EV blog for a later year. So I did some fir firmware comparisons. So I grabbed the EPOMs out and did all that stuff and um, did a, a check verification on the firmware and yeah, it's exactly the same firmware as uh, 1986 Datron, so that's pretty good. So it's quite nice to know that I've got the right firmware <laughs> and it seems to be intact. Checked all the chips, it's alright. So that other Datron was up there, there's one more video to come for that one, that's um, 
that had one fault left, which I didn't cover so far. Well, I didn't mention it. You know, the um, G plug E ball playing up. When you plug this ball in, it just you know played up quite a bit and wouldn't boot and stuff like that. So I did find the cause for that. I'm not going to reveal what the cause is now. You have to watch the video. But um, yeah, it was. Um, I wouldn't say surprising, I'd say amazing, there you go, or stunning, I don't know, anyway, it'll be interesting, don't say, oh, yeah, I'm not going to say, I'm not saying what's going to, what the cause was, you can all keep guessing, in fact, you want to put guesses down in the chat, that'd be quite good, so if you've been following the Datron series and you've, uh, You've seen what the G Pub eball does when it's plugged in. If you want to put any guesses, put it in the chat. And uh Hey Manuel, how's it going? And um yeah, so please do that. That'd be quite interesting to see if anyone can guess. Uh, if someone does guess, I'm not gonna say whether you got it right or not. Leave your that leave your going. That'd be quite fun, I think. Gonna watch the video. Well there's Five of them, yeah, there's five of those videos so far. The reason it's broken up so much is because it's quite a long troubleshooting process. I spent many, many hours on it. And so, um, in order to try and make sure it's not like one massive video which has been stripped right back, I, I'll do a, a serious break up of it to try and not lose any detail in there. Like, you know, but there's subtle things in there. Each one has got its own little aspect which it's looking at at the time. So that's why I try and do it that way. Do it after a big video series of something and not lose anything which could be relevant to someone. Um, then edit all that stuff out and make one video. Just you know, prefer to do a multiple video series. Yep. Yes, the G probably is fixed, fixed Dave. Um, the there's one more video to come, which which you which will show that part and what I found. So that'll be yeah, that'll be this week that'll come out. So on Friday's repair video, it'll be that one. Well, for most of you, it'll be Thursday, but I publish on a Friday for me, Friday morning. But for most of you, I suppose it's a Thursday when you get to see it. <clears throat> Um, SPD 1305X. It was a 3305X, I think it was, because it's 3 channel. 3 channel 30 volt 5 amp. Yeah, SPD 3305. <clears throat> there are alternatives. Um, there's a lot. Of ch there's actually quite a few around that design concept, you know, that kind of voltage range, that current. Um, that number of channels, fixed 5 volt supply, and that sort of stuff. There's quite a few different brands out there. Um, I can only really test, you know, say anything about ones I've experienced with. So, personally, I've got a Corad um, supply which has got basically the same kind of specs. Doesn't have the display on it though, so you can't do the um, graphing and stuff like that. It doesn't have any other features on it, which is quite nice. They have graphing. I've used that from time to time. On my other signal unit, which does have graphing, um, but as far as like the voltage and, and current goes, they're all pretty, pretty similar. The one of the most important things you want to do for, for lab supply is get one which is quiet, very low noise, um, because you don't want to be introducing noise into your test setup by having a dirty power supply. So that's something you'd be considering is, is that aspect of it, um, and which is why you want to go for linear power supply rather than a switch mode supply. Because switch modes inherently have noise. Um, the better ones, like really high quality ones, will have really good filtering on them. The more budget ones won't. They'll be quite noisy. So that's something you want to consider is try and get a linear supply. Um, it does make quite a big difference. <clears throat> yeah, I did a one channel as well. That is an SPD 16. What the hell is it? I've got. I've actually got a thing on my desk here. I kept it. I didn't give it back. I decided to buy it. Um, SPD 1168X. This, this chair's making a lot of noise, isn't it? Um, SPD 1168X. That's the single channel supply, which is the 16 volt 8 amp supply. 
Um, that's probably one you're thinking of. Do I know much about GPRB programming? No, I've never used it. I've got, I've got, I think just every piece of gear I've got has got GPRB on it because when I buy stuff, I try and get the best. Like if I'm you know, looking for a certain piece of gear which is broken, I'll tr if I've got choices, I'll choose one which has got GPRB on it. Um, just because then it's got the feature and if I ever do decide to use it in the future, then I can do that. But it's not something I play with. I've got a, I did pick up a GPIB to USB adapter. I do have one. I do have a GPIB cable. I think just the one. So I did actually do all that with the intention of playing with it one day, but I haven't got there yet. Um. Yeah, I do like the, the power supply, the 1168X. Yes, I do like it. The Siglant gear is actually pretty good. I mean, I know it's a more budget brand, but for the money you're paying, you actually get some really good gear. I, I, I've I've got a fair bit of Siglant gear myself. And yes, I do have a relationship with Siglant. Uh, they give me things to review and stuff like that. So um, so I try and keep things in a unbiased way as possible. Um, but I do like their gear. So, I'm sure, there's lots of choices out there, and um, sometimes it's a matter of preference. You know, sometimes user interface is slightly different. You might prefer a certain way of doing it compared to how another brand does it. And that's another consideration as well. If you can try and see videos on user interfaces, maybe it will um, give you an idea which one suits you better. That's another thing. Yeah, I mean, GPIP, so I do want to play with. I just haven't got there. So. Um, usually I have to use a, a PC laptop if I'm doing any kind of interfacing kind of work because I'm running on a Mac and my Mac doesn't talk to a lot of stuff. Um, there's a lack of software, lack of support for Mac, which is a bit of a shame. Some things are fine, but um, a lot of things don't. I don't. I think I don't know. I don't know if it's GPIB support for Mac. I don't know. If there is, it would make my job a lot easier if I do want to play with it. If anyone knows if you've got GPIB support for Mac, then that'd be great any software tips, that kind of thing, because I, I've got no experience with it. I do want to have a play with it. I do want to have a go. Yeah, you've got the skippy command stuff, haven't you? You've got to deal with um, SCPI, for those that don't know what skippy means. The, um, yeah, so I've I've done some a little bit of that command stuff with some of the gear, we have a web interface, so it's done through USB rather than through GPIB. So you can do a little bit of that. Um, I play with that a little bit, not much. So I've got I've got very little experience with it. You know, I tend to use things standalone rather than has linked and automated. I don't tend to do any of that. Well, I haven't done any of that. So that is stuff I probably do want to play with at some point in the future. So if anyone's got any advice, please chuck it in the chat because I could use it. Or even in the comments later on if anyone's watching this video later on. Yeah. PM2811. What's a 2811? Don't recognise that number. I'm just going to quickly look it up because I'm curious. It's giving light bulb results, so I can't be right. <laughs> hmm. Hold on. Let's try that. That's better. Okay. Power supply. Okay. Right, so I'm still trying to wake up with the pain. Yeah, Ian, that's right. I've um, 
I did read somewhere about the extra digit you get from the GPIB interface rather than display. I do wonder why they did that that way. Actually, I'm surprised if you got room on display, why wouldn't you just display it if you could do it? So I do find it a bit odd. Because you've got a three five uh, three four five eight, haven't you, Ian? That's what you've got, isn't it? I was actually looking on eBay the other day trying to see if I could find a cheap three four five seven A. Because all my gear right now is six and a half digit, and I would like a bit more resolution. Um, you always want more, you know. I'll probably get seven and a half digit and think, oh, I could do an eight and a half digit. Then I'll get an eight and a half digit and think, oh, I could use this a nine and a half digit. <laughs> probably the way it goes, isn't it? Rock nuts. Yeah. So. Yeah, I definitely want to play with GPIB. That'd be good, I think. You know, I know there is automation like um, is it feedback loop. I think I've seen done some of his videos where he's done automation on, on bits of gear he's been playing with. I think it's him I've seen it doing. I've certainly seen it other places too. You can pick them up cheap. Well, relatively cheap. Yeah, <laughs> it's still expensive. It's still a lot of money. So there was a couple I was looking at on eBay the other day, I was thinking, oh, that's actually quite tempting. Um, price didn't look too bad, relatively good, I should say, for the model. Condition not wonderful, but functional, apparently. So, yeah. Lots of money to go down there. Yeah, definitely. Money put when it comes to getting test gear. So, I mean, as you all know, or hopefully you all know, I try and get stuff to fix it, right? But when it comes to something which I want to use for doing calibrations later on, I'd rather have something which is known working and hopefully calibrated. So then I can sort of trust it a bit. It's pretty hard doing calibration work where you don't actually know how good your gear is. I mean, I'll, I'll do it based on cost checks. Right? It's only the only thing I've got, I might repair it thinking, well, that shouldn't have affected the calibration. And then I'll do cross checks for the gear and they kind of align up and they, they're pretty close together. So you think, well, the calibration's probably fine. Um, so there's been a few cases like that where I've done things with it. Oh, okay, it looks fine. Like, this is resistance box here, this Fluke 5450A. I mean, all I've done is repaired relays, right? Um, cleaned them up. As I would have done. Well, I did their live stream, live stream did, wasn't it? Um, so, you know, run those relays, clean them. I uh, replaced one of the relays which I couldn't get right by cleaning. It was still going up a lot. So um, I managed to find some relays, replaced them. I've got one or two spares, I think, for that. So they were quite expensive to get. And now I've lost the point where I was going to. Oh, this is right. I, I, I can trust that because the readings make sense and they're fixed visas to values. Obviously, the only thing with that is. The aging, how, when was that last calibrated? I mean, it's got display that tells you what the resistor value is that's inside it. Um, how the resistor's changed? Don't know. I don't know when that's last calibrated. So I, I'm, I just take that as, right, it was good at that point, so I'm just going to keep going with that value because aging does tend to stabilize a little bit. So it'll age a bit and then it will kind of level off with most things. So. I'm covering up my danger mouse mic not coming up. Anyone in the UK probably recognise that. I'm sure you do. <laughs> right. Do a video on how good each battery is after each other. Oh yeah, plotting 1.5 volts to 1 volt. 100 milliamps. How long it takes. GPIB plotting would be nice. Yes. Yes, you could grab in you could then just graph it out. You could grab plots, chuck it in Excel, and graph it out. And that'd be a really good way of doing it graphically, wouldn't it? And simpler. I think that's the sort of thing that it's really good for. You know, from what I've seen, at least. Andy Mouse, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Anyway. Oh, my cat has come in. You might hear in the background meowing. Is she going to meow? Or she stopped already. She usually meows for a little while. Yeah, she comes in and announces her arrival. 
thought you could hear it. Yeah, anyway. Yes, right. So well, I'm still always, as you must you know, I'm looking for better gear quite often. I, I, I've overextended myself recently as far as my investments, so I'm trying to recoup my funds a little bit first, that, but I'm still keeping my eyes open for things to buy. So I've still got a record Dana 1992 to fix. And the problem I've got with that is, as is usual with those, the buttons are knackered. So, I did have a source for buttons which worked. I've repaired two or three. I think of three. I think I've repaired three of those things already, replaced the buttons. And the source I had for doing the buttons has disappeared. So, I can't get the buttons anymore. I, it took me two days and I found another source of buttons. Um, they look actually better than the ones I was using. So, fingers crossed they're good. So, I've spent $100 on buttons building up a stock of them and hopefully they're the right ones they look right measurements look right so hopefully um, and if they are good then I'll buy some more and get a massive stock of them so I can fix these particular things account this for a long time now fortunately 1992 has got loads of buttons so you got um, 1991 and 1995 I think it is have got far fewer buttons so if you're looking for one of those record down counters, I suggest getting one with less buttons on it because it's less to fix. Do I use ZXW? No. Um, don't have it. I use. Um, oh my god. Flexboard View. There you go. I've forgotten the name for a second there. Flexboard View from Paul Daniels. Um, I use that. You can get the Open Board View version. If you're not wanting to spend a lot of money and have a few less features, I think. But uh, I use flexible view. The the rare times I use it, I don't do much MacBook repairs. Kind of I don't do much in the way of MacBook repairs. So this one here I've had in use, and I've noticed when I was charging up the other day, and I well yesterday a couple of days ago, I was using the mouse. It was jumping. I'm thinking, ah, okay. This one hasn't had the GPU bypassed yet, so I'll need to do that. iPad 6, yeah, I wouldn't know. Um, I'm sure you've probably heard of the Bad Caps Forum. That's the place to find those kinds of things. Not that I'm condoning that kind of you know, activity. Anyway, <clears throat> I'll say that because uh, the ball views schematic diagrams are not released officially let's say that yeah anyway so we shall have a play with this flatbook I mean I've done a few of these already so I've got the tire CS sitting there I don't even see it in the wide view let's get wide view yeah, you can just see it there so a CMI Zappa tire CS sitting there I don't know how to pronounce it, it might be replaced differently, I'm not sure. Um, so, I've got basically put that in, I've got to take the board out of the, of the computer, um, solder that device onto the um, SPI ROM, disable the GPU power supply by lifting a resistor, and hopefully that'll be it. It should be fairly straightforward as long as nothing goes horribly wrong, which could always happen. So I could also do a mailbag as well, live mailbag. Um, I've got, I don't know, I think about seven packages there, something like that. So I could do that too, once I've done the MacBook repair. And maybe we'll have a look at the Datron sitting in the corner. Well, that might be a bit of a spoiler for you, because I've already done a bunch of repairs on it, and it's kind of a spoiler if I show you it now, in case I let slip the things I've been fixing. Hmm, tough choices. Do I show you that Datron or not? Mm. Yes. Let's try and get this a fair bit better. I'm trying to resize things on my screen here to get it to sit a little bit better. Right. It's slightly better. Right, so it's just 
So it's just, I've got my microscope set up, hopefully it'll work. I haven't used it for a while, I've got it plugged in. No spoilers here, okay. Yeah, microscope's working. There's a few hairs on there, but anyway, it's working. Cool. Alright, it's my audio. Let's check out my audio levels. That seems alright, I suppose. Is there any distortion on audio? Any clipping? It looks like I'm getting pretty close to clipping on there. Hopefully it's not. Just let me know if it does seem to be. Especially if I get a bit animated. If I start talking a bit louder in my clip. Right. So if you're watching and you're enjoying the live stream so far, give us a thumbs up. For this channel. Sounds great. Cool. That's good. Yeah, try and maximise it a little bit. I mean, I'm sitting pretty high there. I'm sitting at... Yeah, it's probably peaking about minus six, so it should be okay. It shouldn't clip, but I can see it's had a couple of dots here. It's got pretty close to zero, so I'm just a bit mindful of that. I do have it back down very slightly, so if I get a bit close to it, it might clip a little bit or something. Cool. Nine more likes. Excellent. Well, nine likes now. Hey, Travis, how's it going? Yeah, funny life. I I was doing a whole bunch of live streams last year, and this year I've done far fewer. And um, I was actually hoping to do some more live streams during the lockdown, right? Because I had plenty of time to kill. And I ended up spending all the time catching up with my projects and trying to catch up with work I haven't been doing for a long time. So I um, I ended up doing that instead of the live streams, pretty much. And yeah, so. I'm sort of thinking, oh, my weekends are soon going to start being taken up again with um, with the events I work at. So that'll be coming up next month, that'll start. So I thought I should probably start getting some live streams in before um, I can't do live streams, you know, whilst I have the opportunity to do them. So I thought, all right, I've got something to do a video on, and put a couple of things to do videos on, and it would be all right for live stream, so I thought I'd do one, you know, so... Okay, let's have a look at this thing, shall we? Let's get started. I'm sure you've had enough of me waffling for half an hour. So what we'll do... Let's make it a bit bigger. Now, fortunately, my microscope, I've got normally a little um, HD monitor, probably about that big, which almost sits on my desk. Um, that's currently not here. That's out in the motorhome, because I've been using that on a local web server, which I've run in the motorhome. So I can't, well, although you'd be able to see the microscope what I'm doing, I won't be able to see what I'm doing. <laughs> All right? Unless I happen to be sort of looking like this, trying to see the monitor that's over here. Because it'll be on the screen. A um, little bit awkward, so we'll see how we go with that. Me be able to solder, I don't know what these parts are, they're tiny. I think it might be 0201s, it might be 0105s or something. Um, very small parts. So, we'll see how it goes without me having any magnification. Could be interesting. Right, let's go to... Yeah, let's, go, let's get this bloody view right. This view's not right. It's adjusting this up because I've changed... I had another camera view on here earlier, so... Seriously, it doesn't want to get any bigger than that. Right. Right, you don't need to move you be fussing around with this anyway. Right. Okay, fixed. It's just have someone just bugging me over here. Right. Uh desk wide. So I got that and what I might do. Yeah, I'll just do a desk wide for now, then I'll change over to the microscope once I've got the board out. We'll go from there. Okay. Some more lighting going. I just wonder if I should do a recording of this as well for a normal video. I might, actually. Although I've done this before. Actually, I should do because this was given to me for free, I think. 
Or did I buy this one? I don't remember now. I might have bought this one, actually. But anyway, go and see how CMI Zapper ties here. So it's uh, cmizapper.com. It's probably going to get washed out because the lighting's so bloody bright now. There you go. All right. That's where I got this module from. Um, he actually originally sponsored me and gave me some, some free boards and stuff like that. And I've done a few repairs using his parts, which cost me nothing. And he sent me other bits and pieces too, like um, one of these things, which is a little USB testing. Plug it in and see what the computer's doing, see if it's alive or not. Um, you see Paul Daniels using these as well. He's got one of these. Well, got a couple of these, I think. Although he keeps on losing it, as he, as he does. Test and misplace things all the time, that's all. So, yeah. Yeah, I might as well do a video on this. I've already done this before, but I might as well do another one. Let's get the camera set up. In fact, what I might do is record footage on here as well. And um, try and insert a microscope use That'd be quite good, wouldn't it? Might give that a go. I don't think I've done that before, John. Yeah, Travis, yes, yeah, right. They're very good little boards, really, really effective. Right. Let's start recording this and we'll see how this goes. Last time I did recording on IBS, which is what I'm using for the streaming, the, um, it had no audio. Had had video, not audio. So obviously the stream has audio; you can hear it, but the um, the recording had no audio in it. I, I don't quite know how that worked, but it, that's the way it worked. Very odd. So I don't tend to use OBS for doing recording because because of that. Lost a whole bunch of video footage from that. That was quite annoying. I recorded the whole thing. Then got to play it back in the edit and I thought, oh, I've got no sound. Wasn't impressed. Right. So what I might do, I'll pull it apart. Let's demonstrate the issue. <clears throat> Record cool video at the same time. A bit of behind the scenes action. Is that? Hopefully, you guys can see this too if I get the angles right. Yeah. Right. And I've got my lighting reflecting off everything. That's going to be irritating. There we go. Get booted up and I'll start recording. Don't forget the merch, guys. All right. Let's log into this thing. Let's do that. Yeah, what the hell is the password for this thing? Yeah, of course, that's running smoothly. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you can see it on the camera anyway, you probably can't see it up there, but cursor is smooth. It's not jumping around. Yes, it's jumping around over the place. So it's better to demonstrate. I'm gonna fix this MacBook here. Now this has got a suspected GPU issue, and I was having issues with the cursor jumping around, and today it's behaving, but yesterday it's jumping everywhere. So I can't demonstrate it, which is what I was planning on doing. Um I was doing a smooth transition across the screen with the cursor and it'd be jumping it sort of jump from here to there suddenly um, which is due to the graphics not updating correctly so I believe it's got a GPU issue this is a 2011 15 inch so which are renowned for having graphics issues so if I go to the get info well, about this Mac thing and there's the info about the computer and you can just see here AMD and Intel, so AMD is the dedicated graphics, which is the problem, so we need to disable that. Now I've done videos on this previously showing how to do this. Um, I thought I'd show you again, because why not? Why not see any other one? <coughs> right. 
Sure, dang it. Yeah, it's typical, isn't it? I've got to demonstrate the problem and it's not there. <laughs> typical. Hello, anonymous repair. How's it going? Let's try and get my camera set up a little bit better over here. Um, what I might do for you guys, I don't know, can I zoom in, not be too close on this thing? No, it might be too close for you, I'll probably end up being out of shot all the time. Hopefully that manages okay. Let me know if the stream plays up too, if you need dropping. Cause so far, it's looking really good actually. I've restarted my computer and my internet connection this morning to make sure it behaves. Hopefully, it behaves. Right. So, I'm going to take the screws out of the cover here, and this is what I'm going to be using CMI Zapper Tiseus. Now, Harold, who's the guy that runs this and makes these, I think designed the things too. Um, he may have given this one to me for free. I'm not sure. I did buy some as well. Um, this could be one I bought. It could be one he, he gave me for nothing as a promotional thing. Um, so make sure you go and check him out. So cmizapper.com. You'll see it on the bottom there. And basically it's a little module which you put on the SPI ROM. No, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. So when you work on these things, the first thing you'll do is pull the battery out. Don't want to zap it, okay? Before you put any other plugs, pull the battery. So we've got to take the motherboard out of this. The SPI ROM is on the other side of the board. And the other thing we've got to do is over here, by this chip up here, there's a resistor we have to disable. I'm slightly out of focus here, aren't I? Of course I am. Yeah, just up here. Probably can't quite see it, but it's just there. There's a resistor we have to disable. And that uh, kills the GPU power. And helps to disable it more fully. Right, the SPI ROM should do it in itself, but it may get confused if it can sense the GPU's there. So we disable that too. It's part of the thing that is recommended to be done. So we we'll get this board out and pick up a screwdriver. Got to get these out as well. Get the crossheads. Got to get these off. These things here, these cables, never yank on that, just push it out gently and guide it with your fingers because otherwise you can yank the wires out of that plug. It's one of these things we get careful of. On the cable, get this out. Again, never, never ever plug this in with the power plug in because you could easily short it out. <coughs> um, fan's got to come out. Is that the one screwdriver? Is it the one screwdriver? I'll be wanting the one screwdriver. doesn't seem to be very magnetic right now, even though it does have a magnet on it. Fan, put that out gently, not to rip the wire off, or to cancel off the board. Take the other fan off as well. This lighting is a little bit dodgy, let's get some more light. I'm creating shadows here. So it's pretty easy to get the board out of this, it's just lots of screws. I've also got to get this cover here off. Let's grab my screwdriver for that, which I think is all done with the disc. I do actually have another screwdriver, which is quite a nice one, but the um, the tip broke off it yesterday for some reason. It was just, it wasn't even stressing it, it just fell off. It's a bit strange. <laughs> anyway, get the cover there off, because that holds down that flex there and also the keyboard flex which comes in here which you have to pop up. Let's try and be closer. That's out. Like that. So that's all those off. We'll get this one here off as well. And 
got this little flex over here, which is the backlight. It's best to do this before you get to take the screws out, because otherwise you get carried away, pull the screws out, and then find, oh, I left the cable in. Right. I don't do much in the way of MacBooks. I do some. Um, I did it because I was interested to see if I could do them, and yeah, it turns out I can. So this is a machine I've already fixed before. This came with liquid damage, and I repaired all that. But it's since developed the GPU glitching, which is um, a bit of a shame, but not unexpected. It's pretty much a, a failure mode that all of these 2011s, 15 inch and 17 inch will suffer from at some point or other. Maybe repeatedly. Pull this fan out. There's always four screws. I'm sure I've missed one. Where is it? <laughs> anyway, it's one that do as well as take out the DC connector because it's easier to get the whole thing out with the connector with it. Then it's to try and mess around trying to unplug it at the same time, which is easier because it comes with it. Yeah. Right. Now, sometimes I kind of get stuck to this membrane, so it's definitely free there. Just wiggle around a little bit, and it will eventually come out. Make sure nothing's caught on it. It's entirely possible also I missed the flex because that also happens. Have I missed the flex? I don't think so. It's just stuck. Of course I do that. There's DC connector with it. Just easy to get out like that. Okay, not too bad. Chip chat. Oh, I've got a pop up saying Java needs to be updated. No, 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 thanks. I'll do it later. Right. I have actually lost six people. That's not good. Guess they're not into MacBooks. Right. Now we can zoom in. And improve that view very slightly. In fact, I might get a microscope going. Only flux, only decent solder. I'm not going to use hot air, I'm going to use an iron. Change to the new view which I set up earlier. Here we go. You got a nice little corner shot there of what I can see. How's that? Only, yeah, let's make it a bit bigger. Uh, go on. What do you reckon? It would be right, wouldn't it? So you can see it's better than I can right now. I'm going to just get to it as well, because I don't know how the microscope sits off. Anyway, that's the chip I need to put the modification onto. Alright, so boards on the microscope ready to go. Um, 
I've got a microscope view which I hopefully will insert in here or something later on. Hopefully I'm recording it, hopefully it comes out. So this is the module. So I've defeated this before in the bag. Defeated by the bag. Uh, now I've got three modules in here. I bought more than one, obviously. <laughs> Or maybe I bought one and he's given me extras, I'm not sure. I don't actually remember, maybe he's given me extra ones. I know I did buy some. Anyway, so I've got three modules here, great. So I need to use one of these. Now these are the Titius 2. I'm guessing I'm pronouncing it right, I've got no idea. So this actually has the extra wire options for doing the PWM control for the backlight brightness. Now there is an issue on, I think it was High Sierra, was it? 10.13. The, um, the operating system works slightly differently and it doesn't control the brightness properly as it does on previous system versions so 10.12 and stuff is not affected but if you try and use the brightness control for the backlight of the screen on the keyboard um, in 10.12 and previous it's fine it will go up and down but in 10.13 it won't you can actually get a situation where there is no backlight brightness at all it just goes off so um, if you're going to run 10.13, then you need to make sure you hook up the PWM controls. Now, I haven't done that previously myself because I'm not running 10.13 or anything. I'm only running 10.12 as the latest. So, well, yeah, I'm, I'm behind a bit. Um, so this basically has to go over the ROM, like so. And then we just solder that on. It's getting a bit closer. Here's the view from this side. So there's the board. This sits over on just like that. So that's the SBI ROM, which is what it basically is this bootloader, right? And um, system configuration information is on there. So this overwrites the SPI ROM and it does it automatically. So even if you wipe it and do like a parameter RAM reset, non volatile RAM reset, what you want to call it, if you do that, this chip will load it back on again and fix it. So it always disables the UPA. So that's pretty clever. Nice chat chat. Yeah, I've got a ton of mate, a ton of videos. Yeah, I've got um, about seven hundred and fifty odd, seven sixty, something like that. I've oh, yeah, I've got loads. So I've got MacBooks. I've got electronic repair review videos. Um, I've got some dash cam originally. Got some old dash cam videos. Although I've moved those onto a separate channel now. I've got its own channel for that because um, they weren't always going down very well. Um, people didn't tend to like it with the mixture or the electronics and dash cam just seemed wrong it um, weren't very popular in comparison so I moved them onto an own channel and actually do, doing okay on that channel yeah here's a pretty neat looking fix it does do the job very nicely it's very clever very simple easy to do and even someone like me doesn't stuff it up <laughs> All right. So let's solder this thing in here. Now, first of all, let's put some flux on, because it's going to need a bit of flux to have it flow. I've got my iron already going. Some tangle of wiring. It's wrapped around stuff, and everything's falling apart. I really need to clean my desk off. Right. So I'm going to be using Silver solder for this because I needs to be I like good quality stuff so get that on there. Let's tip a little bit. This tip's not been used for a while. Right. So we we'll solder this down basically, and hopefully I'm this without blocking the camera shots. Drag soldering. Right. 
Okay, hope there's a side done. Let's try this side. The tricky thing is to make sure it's bridged across each of the pins correctly because sometimes it doesn't quite bridge across. But today it's looking like it's behaving. That might be done already. That's looking pretty good. How's it look on screen? Does that look like it's soldered? Maybe. Top left two don't look quite right. Don't forget I'm doing this without my own view. I'm doing this with my eyes. Let's give it a bit more. Could this be lighting? Let's give it a bit more. Now I've reached of course. Now I think that's all right. Pretty sure it's done. What do you reckon? Let's get it bigger on screen, see if we can see it. Here we go. Second one down the right doesn't look quite right. Hey Richard. Yeah, I've got the thermal pads on there to help the dissipation. I was doing that to try and save it from dying, but um, it probably put on this life slightly. It's had a bit of use. Anything you can do to get the heat away is probably a good thing. It didn't really make that much of a difference to the computer board itself. The keypad didn't get too hot and that sort of stuff. It's all right. It's looking better, I think. Yeah, I think I do. Let's get closer, right? Eh? Let's get this microscope closer. Let's zoom. Try and zoom. Trying to balance it because it's just off the edge of where I can get the shot. I think that's all right. I thought I'm focusing on this microscope is pretty good. What do, you, what do you guys reckon? Do you reckon it's soldered? Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. The top right hand one still looks a little bit funny, but I think it's okay. to see no, I think it is I think it's the way the lights on it yeah I think I have it there thought it's been too fussy yeah a bit far away to see poppy eh <laughs> cool. Right. That's that part done. Actually, before I forget, I should put that other view back so I zoomed it right in. It's probably going to mess it up in the future. Let's just unzoom it.
Probably make everyone dizzy. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Come on. There's probably a way of doing it automatically. I don't know why I've got this black edge over the side. Let's try and just shift the side by slightly. Give it that. There you go. Alright. Carry on. So that's that part done. Let's clean it up. I did get some new cleaning cloth things. I'm going to try this out. Let's just soak up the worst of it first. Before I wash away with alcohol. So I thought I'd try some different ones out. Because I've got those ones I've been using. Which are like a makeup pad. Actually yeah, I should recall this in my... Right so I'll clean this up now. I'm using this different cleaning cloth things here. I know I've used different ones in the past. I've used it, these, these cleaning pad things here. I've used these before. And these are quite good. But I do tend to string and snag on things. Um, they're fairly good. That's what I've been using. They're cheap. And I thought I'd get some different types. Now this is like a... It's actually like a cotton. It's actually, you know... Bit different. It's also quite stretchy. Um, it's really for cleaning screens and stuff like that. But get a pack of fifty, I think it is. And I thought I'd just give some a go, see if they're any good for doing this, because they might be right. So it's got stuff here. Actually, I'll do. It's going to stop recording and start recording again. So I've got different clips. Yeah, it's lamp free. Right. Let's just try this. So I've not really used this much yet. I've only used it a little bit. So let's see how it comes out. Let's see if it does much of a job compared to the other stuff. Let's see if we can get a lot of the flux off and lift it off. That's actually looking like it's done a pretty good job. That doesn't look bad at all. Yeah, that's not bad. It's lifted quite a lot of that off. I'm happy with that. That's good. That looks slightly better. Hey, Abuski. How's it going? Right. Now, next thing we've got to do, back on this side of the board, actually, I'll start recording. So, next thing we'll do is on this side of the board, we've got to remove the resistor that's up here. So, let's try and get it in shot. Where is it? It's over here. Just there. Right. Trying to get it in microscope shot as well. So that little black was just the middle of the screen on the microscope is what we've got to take off which I can barely even see myself. This is going to be fun. I might zoom out slightly because the audio is focused on this is going to keep, keep cutting in and causing a problem. Right. So I've used hot air to do this in the past, but I think I've ended up resulting this using a soldering iron. So let's see how this goes. Basically, I'm just trying to get some fresh solder onto it. Bear in mind, I can barely see what I'm doing. It's tiny. All right. Yeah, I think I'll use hot air. Now I've got some solder onto it. Now, what I tend to do with these is actually take the resistor and I don't take it away completely, as I shift it off the pad and put it somewhere else. Get some, get my tweezers on there a bit easier. So, I know it's just there somewhere. Here we go. All right, so I'll grab that and just basically I'll just get it and just shift it off the pad, and uh, hopefully it'll be all right. Let's put some flux on it as well. 
Just hope it. Probably going to be in the way of the camera or lights or something. Anyway. Yeah, on. Here's where are. Has it done it? Can't see. Messy, but yes, it's done it. You could have just take the resistor completely off. Yeah, it's pretty ugly, isn't it? Bear in mind, I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> right, that'd probably be alright. Yeah, that is pretty ugly. Not very impressive work. I can do better than that. Nah, might do that. Just want to look nicer. Don't like to leave things in a mess. Sorry about the noise. Yeah, it looks better. Yeah, marginally better. That'll do. I lost it. Yeah, that's better. I'm happy with that. Let's put the thing back together. Back to the chat. Hot tweezer. Yeah, it'd be nice to have hot tweezers. I don't have hot tweezers. <laughs> Might get some more flux off, actually. There's a bit of flux around those capacitors around there, eh? I'll clean it slightly more, then I'll put it back in. Yes, that's the trade-off. You don't have the uh, display port working anymore, but then the GPU is knackered, so you've got no choice really. It's better that, or you know, it's a trade-off between having a working computer or no monitors. 
So that resistor is used for the power supply for the monitor driver. I think it turns the um, turns it off basically. I haven't actually looked into exactly what it does, but that's the right resistor anyway. Although, yeah, yeah, it's the, it'd be the right resistor. I'm, um, I was trying to think, oh, actually, I'm going from memory. Should I make sure this actually is the right resistor? But yeah, I'm sure it is. Um, I should really look into what that actually does, shouldn't I? I could show you. Let's get a flexible view open. Let's do that. Try and get it shrunk down if I can get the thing on a screen. Give me a second, I'll get this going for you. And I'll shove it on screen up the top here, you can see what I'm talking about once I get it up here because it's all the wrong size. Hold on. Because my normal monitor's a um, 4K monitor, so it's much bigger. Than this screen. Uh, which one was it? Is it that one? Uh, hold on. What's the number on this one? DFAB. So it's the one I've fixed before, so it should be a, a job here for it. That one there. It's this board here. And look, there's circuit diagrams. Perfect. And it's over the top of everything else. Not perfect. So, let's see. How am I going to do this? So, that resistor is. Um, Where are we? I've lost myself here. Here. That yeah, was just there. R oh, eight nine one one. Okay. So it's graphics IMVP six underscore PVCC. Makes sense. Pull up on the PDF, and here it is. Start supplying 5 volts from the S3 rail to this chip, which will be disabling this chip, which I think is. Is that MUX? It might be MUX. Something like that. Oh no, see, yeah, I switched my supply here, so it's a buck converter. Which will go to the GPU. So yes, yeah, so that's killing the, the power to the GPU. So these are the MOSFETs. It's driving those as a, as a buck converter, which applies power to the GPU. See, PPV core GPU. Is that where you can see it on screen? I'll make it bigger. All right, so that's the power supply to the GPU. So that's what that's killing. It's killing the driver IC for the power supply by removing that resistor. Okay. Your ASD will fail, yes, for the graphics. That's right, it will fail for the graphics. But that's the only thing it will fail on. You know, it's a trade-off between replacing the GPU, which will fail again, and just disabling and moving on, because this works. Okay, so hopefully you're all happy with that. You can see what it's doing. Actually, I should have recorded that. I stopped the recording in here to make a break. So this is the resistor I just lifted, R8911. That is the power supply to this device here, well, it's one of the supplies to this chip here, which is the power supply for the GPU. So your two MOSFETs over here, which drive through here, which go to PPV core GPU. So that's the GPU's power supply. So that's why it disables the GPU because it's disabling the power supply. That's how that works. 
and here it is on the board just here next to the U8900 right done put it back together Yeah, the GPUs on these are rubbish. It's, it's a huge disaster. It really was a huge disaster. It's a change camera used back to the desk. What did Apple do about it? Uh, I think they did some replacements initially, but they're long out of warranty now. I mean, this is 2011, they're nine years old. So, good luck getting anything fixed now. Because that will not happen. Um, I was going to clean it up a little bit more, wasn't I? Still a little bit of flux in there, I wasn't happy with it. So this little cloth actually works really well. I'm very happy with that. That's doing very nicely. It's lifting that stuff out much better than the other stuff was. I have a couple of other ones as well. Um, I've got, I think, yeah, I showed them mailbags, but you wouldn't have seen, God, it me a bit. Right, so I've shown these mailbags which you wouldn't have seen yet. Um, I've also got these pads as well, which are, they're more like paper. I don't know where these are gonna go. Um, but they're cheap too. I've got a few different ones. I thought I'd set a bit of a phase. So let's look for some different cleaning materials because, yes, these ones I've been using work, but they tend to leave bits of fibre behind, although, you know, better than most things, but um, not enough for me to be happy with. I've got probably probably a year's worth of those left. I bought a packet of them and it lasted ages. So, um, but I've got a sheet of these. And they're working quite well. So you see those mail bags, there'll be links to these mail bags when they come out. Um, I don't think I've shown these yet. Right, that's a view, is that a view right? So that's all done. Let's make sure I've forgotten anything. Alright, let's put the thing back together. And hopefully it still works. Right, let's so fit the motherboard back in. Hopefully everything still works okay. This can be a bit fiddly getting it all back in again. You've got these cables you've got to keep out of the way and not pin anything underneath it. and got to get it in here at a bit of an angle. And It's not as bad as some of the other ones. There are some we've also got like a microphone connector in as well, which because the microphone's mounted in the chassis. You have to refit that as well and mess around that. Anyway, so we've got to get that in there. Guide that under there. We have to unhook all these. Okay, we can mark this budget. It's flat. Be careful not to damage anything in the process, of course. Battery connector. Get these ones out. This is going fairly smoothly, actually. That one here out. I don't think I've missed anything. No. Nope. Now my little tip for this as well is to put the connectors in before you put the screws in. Apart from this one because it's in the way. Um, the reason then, if you have missed the connector and it's pinned underneath the board, you'll find it. Rather than putting all the screws in, putting it all in and finding the very last connector you're going to plug in is underneath the board. Because that's not annoying at all. <laughs> that never happens to me. Never. <clears throat> This one here's popped under, see? The, the pull tab was under, but the um, 
the flex isn't out of the way. But this one's a bit of a fiddly one to get in, probably one of the worst ones to get in. You have to make sure that your little tabs are also lifted up again in case they've fallen down. Or if you're trying to shove a cable in, there won't be a gap for it to go into. So, that's in the right. That's that one. Don't plug the battery in, that's the one you don't plug in. Then the LCD. I hate these LCD things, they seem to be awfully fragile for what they are. As I say, that the retaining clip just comes off the back of it. The lever clip just fell off. As I was saying, it's fragile. Here's my point. We'll get it back on somehow. Get one, get back in. There we go. All right. Right, so that's that in, that in, that in, not that not in, that not in, 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 in. Right, put the screws back in. So far, so good. Chip chat. Used to use loaders for the latest OS X. Really? Okay. I wasn't aware of that. So I'm using older systems anyway, so I'm only using 10.12 at the latest. Yeah. No, I didn't use brightness controls because I'm not using anything anything newer than 10.12. So if you were if you were wanting to use 10.13 or newer, then you have to add those wires in from the board as well so you control the brightness through that board because it bypasses the original circuitry so yeah that's right you're, you're right there Richard but in my case I'm not using anything which requires the brightness controls to be um, updated 10.12 is fine it works fine 10.12 it's only 10.13 on onwards which has the issue of the brightness controls Screwed down. Uh, not that one, that one Now, normally you would want to test it before you screw it back down and make sure it's not ruined. <laughs> I'm fairly confident I haven't messed this up, so I'm just going to put it together and then uh, test it afterwards because it's not likely to be ruined. But it could well prove me wrong. It could go horribly wrong and just uh, you know come and bite me. That sort of thing happens, isn't it? Where's the other long screw going? I seem to have lost the screw. It was right here. Hmm, that's weird. Where's that gone? Where's it gone?
There's a static casing. No. I definitely took two screws out of here. Where's it gone? Yeah, it's just stuck to the mouth. It's stuck over here. There we go. It's there. <laughs> Damn mech safe. <laughs> Alright. Don't know how it got there, but anyway. Doesn't feel like it's quite lined up. Right? It's alright. Just suspicious. One day I probably will actually do one of my books on 10.13 and um, get that all running. Probably will do it one day. Maybe in 10.14 if we can do it, I don't know. But I might just give it a go one day. Which will require me to put those wires in. Test it shortly. What we basically got to do is boot up, confirm that the GPU doesn't show up anymore. It shouldn't do because it doesn't have any power. And as long as it still boots and gets past that second stage of the boot process where it switches the GPUs, then we should be good. Which is what often happens when you see the GPU failures on these things, they'll be completely gone. So as it boots up, you get halfway through the boot process and you'll go to a white screen. You know, you'll initially boot up and you'll see the Apple you know, loading logo and the, and the loading bar. And um, then it will just go white. And when that happens, that's because of the GPU failure. GPU is dead. And um, that's a symptom of that. So if you get that white screen as you, as you boot up, Need the GPU. Okay. Let's everything back in. Let's put this one back on. Put this one back in. Let's put the bottom cover on. It probably won't hold any smoking. And let's try it out. This is taking off a long time. <laughs> this does not seem right. Oh. Might be reflashing itself with that um, boot wrong. Let's just make it do it again. It's not plug that. Plug in power from this instead. Sometimes can need like a reset, which is what we do from this way. Fans are still spinning. There we go. We have a screen, and we have a boot, and I'll just pop the power off. So <laughs> that's fine. Let's plug the battery back in. It's done its reset now. It's 
Oh, you found it booting off the battery. That's interesting. Anyway, we'll look at that in a minute. It is at least booting this far. See if we go all the way. Okay, you're booted. Now I have to look at uh, what's going on with that boot up from the battery. Right, we're in. Mouse movement is smooth. Only one GPU showing up, which is the Intel, so that's fine. So that's as it should be. Battery says it's charging. Let's look at the power specs and fire shall System report. Weirdness not wanting to boot from the battery. The battery looks okay. Right, um, let's have a look at that. Graphics displays, there we go. That's what it just shows up, just the internal Intel, which is exactly right. Okay. Power keeps going, that's good. <laughs> Let's shut it down again, see if I can boot it off the battery this time. Yeah, there we go. All good. So that seems to be working. That's good. So that GPU issue should be no more. Obviously now there's no DisplayPort connection that doesn't work anymore. That's the trade-off with disabling GPU. You no longer have the DisplayPort, which is a bit of a shame. Um, it's just the way it is. You can't do much about that. Um, yes, it is. I'll change it later. It's not a stupid password anyway. To because this does have display mirroring as well, I think it's got through here, doesn't it? Um, what's it under? I've forgotten. Maybe some of the displays mirroring options, so you can do air displays, all right? So you can do that with the menu at the top here, this up here. So if you have airport capable displays or airplay displays then you can still do it through that way um, so it's not completely gone in that respect but uh, I don't use mirroring because I've got nothing to use it with so turn it off it's one less feature I don't need to have turned on anyway that's working fine I'm happy with that um, I'm not going to do any like benchmarking or like it it's working so you know displays looking absolutely fine mouse is looking smooth and fine so I'm happy with that. Shut down. One modification done. We'll call that done. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe and that sort of stuff. If you've not really been to the channel before and do you want to follow my videos, electronics, MacBooks, reviews, whatever, make sure you do that. Catch you later. Right. 
Let's set down. Let's check. Check. I've haven't looked at it for quite a while. Um, twelve is what's here. I think it's. I think twelve is high Sierra. Remember rightly? I oh, thought thirteen is high Sierra. Yes. Yeah. For this is the two thousand eleven model. So this is the. I think they came out of ten point seven or something like. That, I think they came out with. Um, and you know what you learnt in the past 30 minutes, are you? Um, okay. APFS, yeah, I think something like that. Yeah, I think you're right, Richard. And I, uh, Apple used to be really good at doing backward compatibility. Like in the previous, before OS X, right? This is going back a while. I was six been around for quite some time. They had uh, System 7, System 8, System 9. I think there was, yes, yeah, System 9 as well. And they were fairly compatible with each other. So you could, within limits, um, as long as certain other features were supported, you could run older stuff just fine. I think they started to play up in about OS 9. They started to do some stuff where it wasn't quite as backward compatible as it used to be. And obviously when I stepped up to OS X, which is 10, um, they obviously because it's a complete redesign of the whole system it changed radically but there were still some backward compatibility with 9 and then as they went to I think it's 10.1 uh, 10 or 10.2 something like that they took that away a little bit um, so yeah there's um, but it seems now that the, the backward compatibility thing is getting worse so things like I used to be able to sync my phone with my computer right so well I'll sync but um, sharing. So my phone's running 10.13, I think it is, and iOS. And I used to be able to do handoffs between the browser on my computer, the browser on my phone. They could communicate quite happily, and if I could have something up on my machine here, and I could pick up on my phone and carry on where I left off, and the same the other way around. I could have something on my phone I was looking at, come to the computer, look at it, and it'll, it'll load up. They took that away in the one of the iOS updates. So now you need to have a newer system on the computer, better use the iOS handoff feature between the computer and the phone. Drive me nuts, because it had a working feature, it worked, and I took it away, effectively. So for me, the update wasn't an update, it was a downgrade. You know, not good. My wife bought me another coffee whilst I was doing that. You probably heard the door opening. Alright, um, so here we are. <laughs> Lewis ran some stuff for you, are you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you have to do like a, a reset on it as well. A bit like an NVRAM, it resets sometimes. Got ASD, yeah, I've got ASD for it. Um, but I'm not going to go through the process, I don't need to. Um, it will take a, about an hour if I check all the graphics and well, the graphics, the uh, memory and stuff as well. It takes a long time. I could do it, I do have it for the sake of completeness. I could do it, eh? What do you reckon? But it will say the GPU fails. Um, yeah, I'm not going anywhere, it's just saying goodbye in the video I was recording, so, obviously. Yeah, it's a bit of a pain, isn't it, having a bloody incompatibility between the phone and computer, because I'm using a 2010 Mac Pro, right, so I've got a bit of a power horse machine, although it's old, and probably might find some of the newer GPUs almost as powerful as what this machine can do. But it's very flexible, so I can change the uh, GPUs. You know, I can change you know, the graphics cards. It can take four hard drives. I've got three in there, I think. I think I've got three hard drives inside it, that sort of stuff. So, because um, I'm using that for backups and um, and things like that. So, yeah, yeah, that's right. It will fail for the GPU, but that's the only thing it will fail for. 
So everything else should be right. I mean, I, I tested this thing on, tested this thing previously on ASD, I only failed for, for the GPU. I could get it out. Let me just check. I do have a, a list here of things like that. Um, let me find my machine list. I'll show you this. I actually sent this to Paul Daniels, and I think he uses it. I shall show you it once it loads up. This is based information I found on the internet and lots of research. So let me go to the top screen. It might be a bit small for you guys to see. Well, oh, I don't want that now. I can go. Hopefully you can see that. So, this is my reference here about this. So we've got the machine model, screen size, its year, its model number, PCB numbers, which, which are things I've filled out from machines I've worked on, right? So these are ones I've actually done. As you can see, I've done many myself, but those are the machines I've worked on. Usually the same one over and over again. And these are the ASD numbers here. So we've got ASD year, down here, I know it's going to be small for you guys, and then you've got the ASD version, like 123, 130, 132, 135, 32, 162, which is the last one, before they went to their online version. So, if I, can I make this bigger? Nah, zoom, 125, might be slightly better. All right. And some of these is two versions because they're like a later version, then come out and superseded the previous one, so it works on both. Um, so this one here is 2011, so it came down in 2011, and it's a 15 inch 2915, right? So this row here is the machine, so it's one of these ASDs, which is 144. So that's the chart. So I sent this to Paul Daniels. This it's probably filled in a lot more on his, you know, because he does a lot more Apple stuff than I do. So uh, yeah, there's that. So I thought I'd show you that. Maybe you know, freeze it or something. Just nice little reference. So I need ASD one four four. So I'm actually, yeah, I can't do that. Um, and let's boot that up and do a um, desk wide. Yeah. Let's just chuck the ASD on it and boot it up then. We'll go through that process just for the sake of completeness. ASD 144 is not that drive. The assist drive. ASD 144. Let's see some more video on this, guys. So, for the sake of completeness, we'll chuck in ASD and we shall do a test on this. And it will fail, it will fail for GPU, but we'll see if it fails for anything else. Okay, hold the option key down in order to choose the operating system you want to boot into. So we want 144, and there's two versions on here. I've got a whole bunch of ASD on this drive, so we've got the the EFI version, which is a really minimized system, and I've also got the OS version as well. Um, unfortunately, all the EFI boot ones are just called EFI boot rather than the actual number, which is a bit of a shame. Um, doesn't actually tell you which one it is. So we want 144, so let's do the OS 144. We'll see how it goes. So like flashing, it's loading just fine. Hey Johnny, here's again. So 
let's just sort yourself out. There we go. So it's done its initial boot up test. So what I won't do is test memory. Um, when I find where that is, it's in the list somewhere. I'll probably just jump past it. I want to test hard drive. What do I see memory? I'm not seeing. Hmm, okay, that's your memory. memory test on there, never mind. Right, so display on error will keep on going with errors. And we'll do a test. This is going to take a while, so let's get it going. And it will fail GPU. So, sensor reading below. Yes, right, because it's GPU V core, because it's GPU V core is turned off. If that wasn't turned off, that wouldn't fail for that. Okay, so there's a close up view of that, that error there. That's fine. So it's done fan test now, and it will soon it will do a sleep test as well. We'll shut the display off and shut down and start back up again a little while later or stuff like that. So I'll come back once it's finished. So you guys want to sit here watching it or just want to come back to it? Yeah, memory always takes forever. Oh yeah, you got it loaded up, cool. Yep. So yeah, that's that part. So let's let that run. It shouldn't take too long with that memory testing. Although I didn't see memory testing in the list for some reason. A bit odd. Um, so I'm not reading. <laughs> Could be possible. Let's obviously leave that going. Right, let's come back here. Yeah, let's do that one. Here we go. I was sitting in the corner like this. Retrofitting of an i7 CPU and NVIDIA video board out of an HP. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure I want to go there. Um, the closest I came is on one of the machines I removed the GPU, and that was nerve wracking because I don't have a proper station for doing that. There you go. Now it's doing sleep tests. The um, oh graphics test right now. So the um, yeah, that was a bit nerve wracking because it's uh, you know, heating up a lot. Trying to get the thing off is like shit. This is like cooking it, and is it going to come off? <laughs> Am I causing more damage than I'm solving? But it came off. The intention then was to actually replace the GPU. I did get some GPUs from China. I've got about three, I think, three GPUs. Are they any good? I don't know. Can I fit them properly? Probably not. So. Yeah, I haven't gone there. I've just got them sitting there. I mean, who knows? That might be bad anyway. Yeah. Using a gas iron. Yeah, I've used gas irons. The thing I, I got caught out by once is my gas iron, at least, I don't know if yours is different. It's got like a vent on the side, and you actually get the heat coming out the side of the iron. Um, obviously, it then transfers down to the tip, but you've got this gas coming out the side. And I was doing something, and that bit coming out the side caught me out, and I melted something nearby. I think this is wiring or something. I can't remember what it was now. But remember, it caught me out. I thought, oh, I better make sure I'll be careful about that in future. <laughs> so, yeah. But I suppose, I think really for now, if I'm doing anything... Remote. I mean, I've got the gas on, obviously, but um, 
I'll probably use like the TS100 as a battery pack kind of thing. I'd rather use that. No, I didn't set up one with Lewis doing that. No. I don't think I have anyway. I have seen some reballing videos and stuff like that and re GPU stuff, but uh, there's a lot of pins on that thing. Uh, yours does the same. Yeah, just have to be careful, though. Um, yes. It's still going. It's going to take a little while. So at least that's that, that Mac... That, I can't say. At least that's that laptop done now. So that's that job done. Um, so we could do a mailbag video next. Once that's finished doing all this, I'll be happy with it. I'll go and shut it off, put it with one side. And um, actually, I should put in the... Flex PV that PV that I've um, that I've done that work. I should put that in there. I should put in the log. Or just sitting behind OBS, of course. Jobs. Uh, which one was it again? The F8V. Yeah. And I should note on here that I've disabled the GPU. Move that. This thing about flexible view is pretty good, right? So let's go to the top screen. Actually, shove it in here. Let's resize everything so I can get into the top screen. Yeah, it's kind of working. Isn't it? So, so I've added notes in here, so I've, I've clicked on that resistor, done a thing to add a note, removed that part, so that's now gone, and what I should also do is flip it over to the other side, over to here, which is where the SPI ROM is, and then note to this, a job item, added, I uh, how spell this? T S T I C S G P U killer. Done. So that's my notes for that job done. And there we go. ASD is now failed, as expected. Cool. So that's that done. Get rid of that. And let's go back to the desk. PCH, that would be funny. The, the better uh, that of the dead PCH, I'll just put it in my scrap bin. <laughs> What's going to go there? I get this, that doesn't reflect too much. All right. So there we go, it's failed, but that's what we expected to happen. And it would have only failed on one thing I expect. So let's have a look. Where's on my mouse? Here we go. So yep, sure enough. It's just on that one thing there. Error count one, which is the GPU. Which we come back up to at the top here. As I showed before, this thing here. Right, GPU V core. Because we turned it off. So in theory, if you left the GPU V core in place without disabling it, ASD will probably pass. It probably will pass. That's something I may try actually, but um, you have to find another way of disabling G Core G GPU. Hmm. Anyway, that's did what I expected to do. Everything else passed, so I'm happy with that. We'll shut this in the arm. So this is a machine I repaired earlier, so I've got about eight MacBooks here, which I've repaired. And I've got, I don't know, it's probably about another four or five more, which I've repaired and sold on. So, um, yeah, but pretty good success, actually. But then, I've, that said, I've got four, six more MacBooks underneath my desk here, which I need to fix. Two which are fixable, 
Four watch I'm not so sure about because they're pretty bad. But it's a, it's a risk you take, you know. You, you get stuff, you think, maybe you can fix it, maybe you can't. Yeah. Yeah, let's say the, the failure was completely expected. Let's say that was no surprise. You know, we need to disable the GPU power, then someone's going to go, yeah, nah. Would I object to someone running it? No, because I'd to say the GPU's been disabled. You know, because it's a known issue. I've sold them before, and, and um, I've said that the GPU has been disabled because of the failures. And I said it just runs off the internal Intel graphics and the DisplayPort doesn't work. And I, you know, I sold it slightly cheaper as a result. Although, I suppose you can actually say it's an upgrade, not a downgrade. But yeah. ASD passed, MBP, and the MacBook crashes. Yeah. I've had that as well. I've had ASD passing. I've had a, uh, one of the machines got sat to one side actually. ASD passes. It doesn't fail, and the machine doesn't work. <laughs> it, it it just doesn't work right. So uh, yeah, that's one I've got sat to one side. I'll look at it. We'll detail one day. I haven't got around to it. I know some boot machine from external on drive. You mean? All oh, right. Well. If I was going to demonstrate, I'd use my own drive to demonstrate it for a start. But if it's a machine I was going to sell to them, I'd say, give it the money, do what you want with it. <laughs> you know, that's what it would be. Because who knows? I mean, I could put something on there which then takes the computer down. You know, or, or does something with the BIOS and, and screws the BIOS up or something like that and says, oh no, it's not worth anything now. I'll give you 50 bucks for it. Someone would do it. Yeah. Anyway, that's that bit done. So, what do you reckon? Should we do a mailbag now? Live mailbag? Since has got the lights on already. Still trying to sell the machine, really. Oh. Alright. Yeah, I mean, I'll be cautious about stuff, you know. It's like, mm. I, I won't let someone, if I'm selling something or doing some kind of deal like that, I won't let someone take something unless I've got the money. You know, I must have the money first. You know, I've. it's all very nice trying to be trusting and relying that someone will give you the money. Um, sometimes it doesn't happen, and so. As a rule, I've said because I've been caught out in the past, I always expect payment up front. Like if I'm doing repairs for people as well, if someone gives me something to fix for them, um, then I say payment before you take it. Otherwise, you don't take it. That's the way it is, you know. I, I, I steadfastly hold to that rule because I've done people favors before, people which I thought I knew, and then lost money. So, yeah. So uh, I learned that one the hard way. As I think most people do, though, you know, I'd be trusting and trying to think that, oh, you know, it'd be right for this person in you know, this one time, it would be okay. Nah. <laughs> Don't go there. Always get the money first. Yeah. Limits of inspection, all oh, right. Yeah, I mean, it only catches so much stuff. It doesn't catch everything. There's still faults. So I've got a machine here which has got faults. ISD doesn't pick up. So, yeah, it's something to consider. Um, there's a little app called Hardware Monitor, which I've run on machines as well. And it was just sitting in the taskbar. And that actually works quite well for detecting um, sensor issues as well. So it shows you all the sensor readings, like the 
um, voltages, the temperature sensors, that sort of stuff. It shows you all that. Hi, micro matches again. And so that's quite good for the steam like check. So if you have a machine which seems to be working okay, but has an intermittent problem, you can have that running. Just have it sitting on the side there, and if it plays up, like GPU issues, a good example, you might see the temperature change. You know, it might say 129 when it shouldn't say 129, for example, or some other number. Um, yeah, it's a really good little app. Um, another one which might be handy, there's a Intel app which you can run which shows your CPU performance, what the CPU is doing, like its workload. So you can see its temperature, its um, um, utilization, that kind of thing. It shows you all that. So if your, CPU, if your computer seems to be struggling, you can look at the CPU and see if it's that which is causing the problem, whether it's CPU load, which is causing it to be slow, whether there's something else going on, which is throttling itself or something like that. You better see that. But the hardware monitor is quite a little bit wrap. Um, I don't remember where it came from now. Let's see if I can find it. Um, that seems familiar. Is this it? If I find it, I'll show it on screen. This seems different. There's a new revision which I'm not running, maybe. The name sounds familiar. Might be the right one. I was checking now. Not the right one. Maybe it's HW monitor. Maybe it could be that one. Let me have a look. Hold on. Let's try and sort this out. Want to get to the bottom of this now, it's bugging me. HW sensors that's what it'll be. HW sensors. Let me just unpack it and make sure. Yeah, it's weird because it's called HW sensors on the file, the app is called HW monitor. Show the top window. Right, so HW monitor is what it's called on here. And if I open it up, yeah, sure. It pops a little thing up in the taskbar which you can't see. But there's the display you get. It's a little list of all the sensors. So it tells you all the temperatures for everything. Everything's got sensors for everything's programmed into it. Anyway, it may have things missing. It may even include things which aren't installed. Um, I've got memory slots three and four, for example, in my machine aren't populated, so they're giving an error for temperature because they're not there. But it shows all these voltages and all that sort of stuff. Um, wattages used. So it's very comprehensive. So if you've got an issue with the machine, this is a handy little thing to have installed on it because you can use this to check what's going on. You can see my CPU is running a bit hot, 79, which is interesting. And 74 on a PCH, which is also showing it being a bit hot, but yeah, whatever. So yes, that's um, HW Monitor. Handy app. Now it's installed on my machine. <laughs> but yeah, you can have it say uh, you can set preferences up on it, say so boots on, start up, and stuff like that. Let's get our screens. Get back in here. Yeah, got it. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's a handy little thing to have. I think, did I see using it? It might have been a 
I think it might be Paul Daniels. Might be, I might have seen him using it, and that's probably where I got it from. Um, well, got to know about it. Might have been him, or it could have even been Lewis. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, it's a good app to have. Right, let's do something else. It's this mailbag. Behind us is mailbag. Desk wide. We need a wide view for this. You can see the Dactron sitting in the corner there. Yeah. Yes, Paul. I know Paul uses it. I've seen Paul use it. But I don't know if that's where I saw it first. Alright, so that's all fine. I'll take this off. It's charged up. You can buy these cables um, from like, AliExpress and places like that. So then we need to do is put power in. So 18.5 volts is what I run it because that's one of the voltages from the chargers. 85 watt charger. I think I know Paul Daniels uses 80, uh, so 18 volts. I run 18.5, but seems fine. Let's push it away. So that's that repair done. It's good because I need that machine for the next time I do an event. Oh, it's a glitching last time I used it, I wasn't happy. Put this away as well. So I actually have places for things, I might put angles. <laughs> so if, if I have something, I tend to know where it is. I tend to, not always. It's always well. Next I need to fix one. So I've got two of those left, which is good. Because I've got... What have I got under there? No, it's 13s. I think they're 13s. That's 13. What's wrong with this one? Uh, don't need this cable, keyboard and trackpad, dead SMC which I've replaced, yeah, trackpad might be an issue on this one, I did buy a trackpad actually, it's clicking, I don't know, maybe it doesn't work, right. anyway so I've got that one there, and this is on here, liquid damage, no chime boot screen, over the S this cable and socket and trackpad. <laughs> this one's got a few issues. These things, yeah, so I've got no trackpad still, it's just like floating around there right now because it's broken, it doesn't work. So, yeah, a few machines to fix still. I'll get around to them eventually. I've been, I've been sitting for ages. The one I really wanted to get on was this one here. It's a 2012 Retina. Now I got this one with a, bit, uh, a suspected RAM issue, but then I noticed it had liquid damage on there, and I tried to fix that, and it actually got worse. So um, yeah, I really want to get this one going. This is a nice machine, but it has got like dirt in here, where it's had liquid spilt on it. It's all inside the grill, and um, yeah, it's a little bit of a mess. But it's a nice machine. I would like to get it going. Yeah, it's just because we had some liquid damage. It was actually carbonized the board a little bit in that spot. It had like a bit of burnt board, which is uh, potentially very bad. So I'll just put it to one side again for now. One day I'll get back to fixing it. Right. I know what's in there. I know what's in here. I don't know what's any of these. Oh, that is just weird. Feel. Don't know. Don't know. Yeah, sometimes I say them anyway, but not often. Do you know what I didn't do with that machine? I didn't put the screws back in it. It's still sitting on my desk. <laughs> I should probably do that first, shouldn't I? <laughs> oh dear. Got 
I'll put the cover back on. Let's just do that. Then we'll do a mailbag, get on with that. See what things I've got stuffed in here. I've still got a whole bunch of stuff which hasn't turned up in China. I've got, um, I'm getting stuff which is slow as well. That stuff is taking like three months to turn up, which has been a bit of an issue. But uh, there's things I ordered months ago, haven't turned up, ordered them again, still haven't turned up yet. <laughs> I want to finish these things, these little boxes. I need the sockets to go on the side for the power supply and the um, bucket regulators that go in there too. I need those too. Uh, no signs of them yet. It's a bit annoying. But that's all it is. A bit inconvenient, really, that's all it is. And then he's got some different screws, he's got like a shoulder on them, they go in the middle. To watch out for those. Right, now I'm putting this machine away. Okay. Okay, thanks Richard. Hope you, you're still around to say goodbye to. Hey Kim, how's it going? I'll try and keep it on the chat once in a while if I can. Right. So, let's do a mailbag video. My camera shut off, let's start it up again. Try and focus it. Also, guys, I you see this. This device here, it's probably getting washed out, as always. See that? That's that, that tron. There's a clue. That's all I'm going to say. The second that tron, not the first that tron. You'll see it in a video. Make sure you check those out. <clears throat> right. I've got a bunch of stuff from Alba again. Well, I've got a few things here. I know what these are. This stuff, no idea. We'll find out. That's an awful thing, I'll do that a bit later. That's a promotional kind of thing, I'll do that a bit later. Let's start with these. Get a merchant shot. Yeah, merch. Just saying, guys. Uh, I'm sure there's a link for it in the chat, above, above chat somewhere as well for buying merch. Anyway, okay. Why well, am I thinking of forgetting something? Now, yeah, knife. Ah, that's right. I need to wrap sharpness up. Let's get a bit blunt. Your shot slightly. Just zoom in, zoom in on there, right? Eh? Give you guys a better view. Maybe too far. See what's in here. Don't forget to subscribe if it's your first time here. 
or you might miss out on my future videos, you, you, know, you might like this one and forget to subscribe and you'll not find me ever again. So make sure you do that. What on earth is this? This is like a industrial kind of drill bit case kind of thing. Ah, it's a little talk spanner. So this is meant for doing up like SMA connectors, although this is a bit more chunky than I was expecting. Um, yeah, so you've got an SMA connector, like on here. The idea is you can use that to do them up and you get the right torque, because it all just clamps over when it gets to the right one. Um, that's the plan anyway. And it's got an adjustment in there. I've got no idea what the adjustment range is. It was mentioned. It was mentioned in the listing. But there's like an Allen key in here. You just do that up to increase the spring tension. So it's just because it's on like a toggle thing which pops over. We'll go either way. This has got a detent here. This has got basically a ball bearing inside here which uh, pops into that detent. So that's a, that force of popping that spring out is what acts as a torque. I don't know, it wasn't that expensive, I think it's well, I think about 20 bucks, I don't know, I think it was. But, um, yeah, I got that because I'm thinking, oh, I'll, I'll keep doing these kinds of connectors and not actually getting them taught. I'm just sort of doing them where I think they should be. I mean, if you're doing connections, you should really have a consistent talking method, so it's always done the same way. Um, this could also be talked up like that, and then here we go, just now talked. So, I thought it would be a good idea to get one. Let's have a look at the instructions. There's probably much better ones to use. There probably are better ones, but um, I don't want to spend a lot of money on this. Because up until now I've been getting away with it just fine. And it's all in Chinese. Operating instructions is the only bit that's in English. That's really helpful. <laughs> What's on this one? Okay, yes, well, yeah. No idea. It, I can see Newton meters on there. Is that a set of one Newton meters? Mission Newton meters up here, one Newton meters. Maybe that's like its range or something. I don't know, I might have to translate these, figure it out. But it's mentioned one Newton meter down here as well. Yeah, I'll have to translate that on my phone, I think. But yeah, that's all right. I should figure that out at some point. Maybe it's set to one user meter. I've got no idea. What's it supposed to be set to? Anyone know? If you do know, chuck down below in the comments. What do you think they should be set to? I've got no idea. Chit chat. Hey Ben. If I have two wires attached to your BMS. <laughs> that sounds like fun. How big is the BMS? Thanks to my Patreon supporters as well. All really much appreciated. Help to support the channel. Help me to buy things from Mailbag. Helps to entertain you. Helps me to buy things to fix as well. Money from that goes towards repairs. Use that to uh, buy a bit of broken test gear and so on. Don't forget to check out the links down below as well. Oh look. BMS modules. <laughs> well, that's a coincidence, isn't it? Have you just mentioned BMS? Which ones are these? These are uh, two cell, yeah, two cell BMS. Yeah. It's like what you're dealing with, is it?
at least they finally arrived. At least took a while. Yeah. So yeah, these are two cell BMS modules. I featured these previously on Malbag because I've used these in, well, in these actually. So I open it up. See, there's one sitting in there right now. BMS sitting right there. So I've used them for that. And I've used them all. I've, I've used all the ones I needed for the project, so I've actually got those built. But I didn't have any left, so I wanted to get some more. And these took ages to arrive. Um, currently, the postal system's being extremely slow. So yeah, anyway, at least I've now got some. And I can uh, at least know I've got some spares, which is always a good thing to have. It's always good having spares. So brass SMA torque, three to five inch pounds or 0.3 to 0.6 newton meters. Okay, so this is probably going a bit too much then. If it's set to one newton meter. How do I calibrate this though? Um, well, we could calibrate, couldn't you? All you need is a one meter long bar, which has a one kilo weight at the end of it. <laughs> but then you've got to allow it to weight to the bar. Yeah. Hmm. Four cell, one hundred amp BMS. All right. Yeah, these are a bit smaller. These are. Um, I think they're five amp. Might be three amp. Come on, like something like anyway. Pretty small. I think they're five amps. Don't remember if it says on there. It says two cell. Then I don't know what they are. Now, a couple of items out of the way. Let's do this one. I know what's in here. It wasn't something I expected either, actually. Is the camera view still alright? Is it a bit? No. Yeah. Okay. It's a piece of way. People are going to get sick of me promoting piece of way because I've been doing it a lot recently. I've been mentioning quite a bit. Uh, sorry about that if it's annoying you. I promise it won't be much longer. Well, it won't be as intensely promoted anyway. So, piece of way is celebrating six years. Very shortly, I think it's been the next couple of weeks. Um, at least at the time of recording this. I'm not sure when you see this mailbag actually, it might be afterwards. Anyway, they're celebrating six years. So they've decided to send me a little gift pack. I didn't ask for this, I just I got a notification saying they sent it to me and it's like, oh okay, well it's in to me. And then here it is. So you've got some PC Ray stickers, six years, yep, okay. Nice ruler. It's really similar to one I've already got. Is it just a different colour? I've already got this one here. Around, Did it right the first time around. So I think it's the same board layout. Looks identical, just different colour. So I've got two of those orders now. It's quite nice. Kind of handy sometimes. Yeah, they're both the same layouts, exactly the same parts. So got a nice black one now. I think the black one looks a lot nicer than the green one actually, because it's gold plated, inked. So it looks really nice. That's good. And they're giving us a badge, it looks like. Yep. Yeah. Pin retainer thing. And the 60 badge, I guess this lights up, is it? Interesting. Takes our CR2032. Let me grab one. Oh, I suddenly for that stuff which is buried behind my camera stands. Oh, well, let's see if I can get one out. Fortunately, my drawer where I keep my batteries is right behind my tripods. So I have to move the tripods out of the way to get to where the batteries are. 
one day, maybe I'll move them. Maybe. Two or three, two. Here we go. Right, so we've got battery. Let's drop that in. And there's a power switch up here. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. This will do anything. Oh, there we go. It's not a C properly. Pushed it in too far. There we go. Flashy lights. Everyone likes flashy lights, don't they? Yeah. Be good for the Christmas tree. Chuck on a Christmas tree at Christmas time and you know you got some little, you know, flashy lights. It's quite cool. Got some nice patterns. That's what I use the other ones for anyway. Yeah, it's not it's this the sort of thing I'd normally order or I would order myself, but uh piece of way to chuck something for free, you know, I, you know, it gives a whole bunch of stuff for nothing. Because they're my sponsors and they help me out and they you know, pay me for doing promotion stuff like that. The Chelsea channel. So the money I've used on PC Way in the past, I'm just doing sort of live stream people, not from the recording. Um, the money for PC Way, I've actually, the money used for that, I bought the, the Fluke 5450A. I purchased that with that money. And also um, contributed to the Datrons as well. So with those sponsorships and me featuring PC Way is a bit of a pain sometimes. Um, it now allows me to buy things to, for my content to help you guys out, and you know, it's a bit of a trade off. Right. And next thing is a shirt. Oh, no, and there's another piece of weight pen and a shirt. Lots of noise, anyway. There you go. Trust me, I'm a PC wire. Right. Is that like a dragon design? It's must be a dragon, isn't it? What do you reckon? Dragon? I think so. Actually, it would look like my shirt, actually. Nice guy. Thing on the back as well. A little logo there. Piece around the sleeve. Cool. Thanks, PC Way, for sending it to me. Pretty nice. I didn't ask you what size shirt I was though. I wonder what size this is. I'm not exactly slim. <laughs> hmm. Let's find it actually. It must be a tag somewhere. Large. Yeah, it might be right. L large can be a bit tight on me sometimes. I used to be a large. I've got larger. <clears throat> anyway, that's how I fold clothes and my wife drives me nuts. Well, that's not right. It drives my wife nuts. So seven to ten inch pounds, yeah. You just got butane liquid over your trousers. That's probably not a good thing. <laughs> right. See, like I say, I. Now, I know some people have commented recently about the fact I've been mentioning PCB a lot. Um, but, so they do help me out a little bit. And the money does go towards the channel. You know, they, they pay me quite nicely actually. When I do, when I do little promotions, like if I do PCBs and I feature them as a PCB manufacturer. And um, they actually quite generously pay for that. So that's quite good because that, that goes a long way to help me to... Uh, Buy items for the channel. Just stick it on the eye. Okay. Okay. 
I should this a bit more prominently, I suppose, should I? Seeing as it is sponsorship. Right. I'm still in focus. Ish. What's in here? Completely wrapped in tape. I hate that. Three buck converters. So these are nine volt buck converters. These actually arrived quite quickly. I only ordered these about two weeks ago, I think, actually. So I've had some stuff which has taken months to arrive, and other stuff which takes two weeks. Bit weird. Although stuff which has arrived after months has been in New Zealand for about two months before they send it to me from Auckland, which is about an hour's drive away. Anyway. <laughs> yes. So, my old buck converters, three of them on there. Break them off as I need them. So I thought I didn't have any 9 volt buck converters, so I thought I'll just get a couple because they'd be handy to have. And these are potentially changeable as well because they, they do have different options voltages on the back there. And um, they also set the voltage based upon the resistor values they use on this board. So you can actually change them if you really want to dig into that. You can probably research a chip that's on there. Can we see what that is? Let's get a close up with this camera here. It's upside down, turn around. What does that say? MP1584EN? Is that it? I think it is. Right, anyway, well, that's all. It is what it is. Like a bit of. Yeah. I suppose I'll show you guys too, shall I? Yeah. And that's what's on the back. We'll focus on that. Come on, focus. Any day now would be nice. Here we go. Right. Don't forget to check out the links down below for these items. I usually have links down there. So fuses, little glass fuses, uh, 0.1 amp and 0.1 amp, so 100 milliamp fuses. I did buy a whole bunch of fuses about two months ago, and it's obviously only these ones I just arrived. I purchased a whole bunch of different ones, and what I realised is that I've got things like these Datrons which use a very small fuse, and I didn't have anything small enough, so um, I've had to like up the rating basically for double in order to um, fuse and I think oh, I should get a selection of small fuses so now I've got a selection of small fuses well a couple of small fuses I've got more coming Jet Jet Hey Graham how's it going? Everyone's cross saving are they? <laughs> Everyone loves making PC rulers. Yeah, they do seem to be everywhere, but they are handy things to have. I mean, especially for the footprints that are on them. Like you've got the SND footprints on there, and sometimes 
you might have a part think, well, which one is this? And you can just put it on the ruler and just see which footprint it is and you can work it out. Um, comes in handy for that. Or if you want to design a part and you, you know what the footprint is based on that ruler, um, it gives you an idea of scale and so well. Sometimes it can be a bit helpful. I might do this big box next and get that out of the way. Oh, and no, I'll do it last. I know what's in there. Yay, finally. <laughs> These are probably the replacement ones I purchased. Is it 10? Yeah, it'd be 10 in there. So yeah, these are the replacements. So these are the sockets I was talking about before for these things. All right, well, I need to put sockets on these to finish the projects, right? These and the, and the power supply section. And I ordered 20, they haven't arrived. So I waited about four months ago and ordered those. So I ordered 10 more, but they've now arrived. And that was two months after the first lot. So the 20 I originally ordered disappeared and the 10 lot I bought purchased as replacement has at least arrived. So I can finish doing some of that at least. Still need to do the buck converters though, which is what I need to put in there. I'll bet you those mine bought ones actually. Actually, I think I've got these as potential ones to use in there because it only actually needs nine volts because the batteries it's running on uses two 18650s in series. And it's also got a BMS in there as well. So that actually floats up the negative side of the batteries to make sure they set the correct voltage. So fully charging those, you want about sort of 8.7 volts or so around there when it's fully charging. So this can do nine volts. So I think I actually did intend to get these to put in here instead of having variable ones. Like the other ones I built, they have variable adjustments in there so I can, I can tune the voltage inside which is supplying the BMS, so it's only doing minimal work, so it's not overloading the voltage too much, it's not floating up too much. So I've got a bit of a cushion there, but I'm setting those around 9 volts, those variable ones, which is why I think I've got these ones. So um, I might just use these actually, so it means I've probably got the stuff I need to finish doing those, which is great. More than if I finish those for months. Yeah, you got an NVIDIA one for GPUs. Yeah, that'd be handy. What time is it? Half past ten. Okay. Right. Ah, okay. Seven four one C. That's what I can make out from that. Might be his real knife. We'll see. Where we go. All right. Here we go. So here are four. M A yeah, M A A. Sorry. Yeah. M A A. M A A. Trying to say it right. Bloody hell. MAA 741C. These are op amps. These got gold leads on them. Quite nice ones. Apparently, new old stock. But you never quite know, do you? They could be fake, they could be real. Don't know. Um, they look the part. I don't doubt them actually. They look about right. So, I think the Dashron's had one of these, and yeah, Dashron's got some of this in there. I think it had a different version. This one's got gold leads. The Dashron ones, I think, didn't have gold leads, but it's a variant of them. So I've got these in case I needed them for that. Um, I think I already had something similar anyway. But yeah, you know, they weren't that expensive. I think it's like twenty bucks for the lot, something like that. I'm slightly more. So I thought I'll get them because I'll probably need them one day for something, even if I don't use them at the Dadrons. Because I like to get spares when I can see them and hopefully have them for the future. Because who knows what I'll be fixing next week. You guys want to see those? Yeah. 
nice old parts or hopefully old parts chit chat again right, nothing different here right. big box time Probably using manual focusing, I have to keep on adjusting it depending on the thing I'm looking at at the time. Right there. Let's go focus up my ring. That sounds bad, doesn't it? <laughs> my ring finger. There you go. Let's do that. So I already know what's in here. It's a little bit different. Hopefully there's no invoices that are going to fall out. Okay. A Z442 oil filter. Z411 oil filter. A A1348 air filter. And an A360 air filter. Um, it's time to service vehicles and actually well overdue actually to be honest but one of the vehicle that uh, this air filter and this oil filter are for we've had that vehicle now for about a year and a half and I kind of haven't got around to servicing yet <clears throat> so it's probably you know, well and truly due so I need to do an oil change on that and that, and that sort of stuff so um, I found a site locally in New Zealand which will sell these without a problem so um, I was actually browsing for them actually I was trying to find out what filters the vehicle needed and this site popped up, I thought, oh, well, I'll just get them from there. I mean, sure, you buy them from like, auto parts stores, stuff like that. So I thought I'd just, I could both go to a shop, to be honest. <laughs> Order them online, why not? Wasn't much more. And these ones here are for my car. Now, I already actually had some spare ones left over, so I serviced my car last week. But uh, I like to have some ready for the next time I want to service it. So now I've got a set here ready for the next service for my car. I also need to do my motorhome, that's due as well. And um, yeah, I, I don't, I'm not going to record videos doing that. No, I'm not a mechanics channel. Although I do have some videos recorded on other repairs for other things I've done and stuff which I haven't published yet. I've got a whole bunch of videos there for like all my repairs and stuff like that. So maybe I'll do those one day if there's interest. Or I don't know, maybe there's a second channel for that, I'm not sure. Or well, third channel because I've already got a second channel, which is my dash cam stuff. Anyway, um, lots of swearing in those videos, so just warning. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, oil filter's not that exciting, but at least now I've got stuff I'll service that car. I might even do it today, so the alright. We'll see how we go. So if you found it interesting, give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you've not been here before, and um, all the usual stuff, you know. Check out the Patreons, which are supporting my channel. Just make them up next in a minute, and you'll see if there's a list of them. Um, they help me to buy things in my bag, and apparently help me to service my car too. Um, and... What else? What else can I say? There's something else I'm missing. Check out my playlist at the end of the video. You know, check out some more videos, watch some more stuff. Watch more. Always watch more. And um, yeah, I fix stuff when I'm not doing my bags. Bye. Right, let's head down. Yeah, right. Look at all cans. Yeah. Hi, you been? How's it going? Uh, what do you mean, where is that? Able ski. What do you mean, where is that? Um, yeah, so that's that done. Put some of the lights off now, actually. And the camera off. Let's forget to turn the camera off. Hey Andy, how's it going? GB? Oh, there's people turning up now. Awesome. Yeah, so that's that's uh, dealt with. So 
Now I've got a whole bunch of mess that I've my floor, which I have to be careful not to trip over until I clean it up. Which might take a few days. I tend to be a bit like that. <laughs> um, I kind of want to show you the dash I've been working on, but the um, I'm likely to do spoilers. And I don't really want to do that. It's not fixed yet. I've got stuff to finish on it yet. But it might make stuff slip. Or let stuff slip. So I'm going to leave that as it is for them. Okay, thanks, Travis. Catch you next time. Oh, it's been silly. Right. Um, yeah, so that's not bad. Um, so I've got a couple of projects I can do later today. Although I should probably spend some wife, some some wife. <laughs> I should probably spend some time with wife today as well because it's actually our anniversary, ten years together. So we went, we did some stuff yesterday to sort of celebrate. Just did it yesterday, instead of today. So um, did a few things yesterday, but I should spend some time with wife today as well. Maybe she will give me some jobs to do, which I need to do instead of the things I want to do. Which it probably involves cutting the grass because she's been asking me to do that for a couple of days. <laughs> But it's been raining a lot, so I haven't yet to do it. Um, yeah, so. I should do that. I need to finish those timers. Well, those keyboard interfaces. And. Maybe service that car today, too, if the weather stays nice. I don't have to do it today, though. I could always do it tomorrow, I suppose. Although, I should probably cut the grass because the wife's been asking. Yeah, so I'm tempted to wrap this up actually. It's been nearly three hours. So that's reasonable, I think. So I think there's anything else I need to cover today. I'm going to show you guys this. Just unplug the cable. I think I showed it in a video. From Leicester. Okay, I'm in New Zealand. Used to be from Kent. This thing here. Did I ever show you guys this? I think I probably did do. It's my. You get it to focus, you bugger. Come on. I'll do it that way. That will work. Lock it out completely. It's my law to Wi Fi gateway. Um, yeah, so it's basically an ESP32 with two LoRa modules and it just receives signals on the LoRa uses the ESP32 to chuck it on the Wi-Fi to go to the website gets the results on the website, sends it back across LoRa to the network, so it's just a little gateway I think I'm sure, I'm sure I've featured this in like PCB Way videos or something like that, but you may guys may not have seen it so I actually need to redesign that, I want to put a bigger screen on because right now it's got a 2.4 inch OLED on the back there and I actually want to put a bigger screen on so I can see better what's going on because the screen simply doesn't have enough data on it, it can't fit enough on yeah that's what the English accent's for because I used to be in the UK I lived over there till I was 18 and I came over here so I've been here longer than I lived in the UK yeah Right, I'm trying to think of if there's anything else I was going to cover today. Oh yeah, that Datron stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about this because you would have seen it. The um, something I got from my work was a whole bunch of old cards from old machines. Obsolete, well obsolete. These machines went ten years ago, right? And they hung around on the cards. They stuck around. Anyway, I managed to grab all the old computer cards from the machines. So, this particular card has got EEPROMs on it. And I actually grabbed the EEPROM off this card and used that as one of the EEPROMs to repair the Datrons. So that was handy. Because I've, I've got a box full of these cards, different ones. Input cards, power supplies, all sorts of stuff. Um, I'm allowed to take these on the condition that I don't sell them. Because obviously I don't want other people repairing their machines like competitors and stuff like that. So, these are on that condition that I don't repurpose them and these are for parts only. So these are from 
are old Penta injection molders. So injection molder machines. Metal Mechanica. Really old machines. They were old when I started there. <laughs> so I don't know anyone's got any of those things running these days. So yeah. So that's quite handy having those balls. I went through all these balls thinking I'm sure I've seen e problems on one of these balls. And sure enough, I had e-problems on it, and I even had to write one because it's a, a 2532, not a 2732 e which is what's in the older Datrons. The newer Datrons had um, the 2732 that changed over. And in here, I've got a set of EPROMs. These are, yes, yeah, a full set in there, which I programmed. For the Datrons is a 1987 firmware, which is actually slightly different. I did a comparison between the 1987 firmware and the 86 firmware, and what's in my Datrons, and the 86 and what's in my Datrons, as I mentioned before, um, is the same. 87 is completely different, so the ma the matches are completely different. They don't actually match, so I'm not quite sure what the difference is between 987 and 1986 in the firmware. Um, I did put the 1987 in the Datron. I did show a video on that. And it did seem to work, but I'm curious about why there's such a big difference between them. Um, what did they change? Is it because there's hardware differences as well? So because of I'm not sure about the hardware differences, um, I've stuck with the same year firmware, the same revision. So I didn't want to change it because in case there's some other effects which I haven't noticed, nothing obvious. Just playing it safe really. But if it's fine, then it'd be nice to put it in. There may be some fixes in there, I don't know. Yeah, these are from the 1062, same model Datron. These are from the 1062 as well. But the um, there are hardware differences. Uh, they do do revisions over time. And I do know that the later Datrons use a 2732 EEPROM, not a 2532. And this was listed as using a 2532 EEPROM. But um, maybe it's different because it isn't a 2532, maybe it is a 2732. Instead, maybe that's why it's so different because the pinout is different. You've got pins that are swapped over, which I can show you on this. This is the little data which I, I think I showed in the video just here. Don't know how it's going to come on camera. Get the light on it. Come on, focus on this. Here we go. So you can see I've got some jumpers on the side there. So I've got two sockets piggybacked. This, this problem with these bloody cameras, I don't focus very well, I always focus in weird places. There you go. No, it's gone again. All right, so uh, there's two two sockets stacked together, and then I've then bent the pins out the side of the top socket, so I can put the jumpers onto the bottom socket, and link it down to change that pin out. There's three pins which have to be shifted around between the two five three two and the two seven three two. I'm actually thinking about doing a video on that because um, it is documented around the place. Well, it's not my idea. It's not like my concept, but someone else has done it, and I thought, oh, that's good. I'll I'll mimic that and copy that. And so I might do a little video on that just in case it helps the people out. Wouldn't say much. Um, Dig a part of Hex to find out what's going on. Yeah, I don't want to break it down to binary and, and try and reverse engineer the whole circuitry to figure it out. I just didn't want to go there. So that's, like, that's not really worth the effort. It could be that the the 1987 firmware is incorrectly labelled as a 2532 EEPROM, not a 2732, because that would explain the difference because of the different pinout. Um, although I did do some binary comparisons, actually. I did reverse the hex on a couple of examples on the same line at the same address location, and I checked the binary in two different places, and it wasn't just like one or two bits changing. There was you know, multiple bits changing. So, um, I don't think it's purely a pinout difference, it's something else. Um, yeah, so it's a shame because it would have been nice to have a more recent firmware, but you don't quite know. So, I thought, well, it works fine with the original, so I don't need to do anything with it. So, I stuck with that. Um, as far as programmer goes, now I've got a few programmers. I've got the, for doing EPROMs, it's a bit trickier. Now I've got an, e an old EEPROM programmer which used to work beautifully but the it was old outdated software around Windows 95 
<laughs> and I don't have a Windows 95 machine anymore. Um, it worked fine though. I think. Actually, no, I did have a few little quirks. Then I got a Batronix EPROM programmer, which the program itself seems fine. Software, not good. Mac software, I only ever did a beta version, and that crashes, it hangs up. It's just rubbish, right? Barely usable. Sometimes you can read a chip if you're lucky, that's a bit better. Try and program one, not likely to work. So you have to do that on the PC version of, of the program, and that's uh, called Promprog, I think it is. And it's still got its quirks. It's not bad, but it's still got a few little quirks in there. It's not as configurable as you'd like to do. I mean, I, not that I've found, you know, I, I would be nice to actually be able to go in there and tweak the adjustments, like the timing, stuff like that. Make the timing a bit slower, so it doesn't try and write so fast sometimes to give you better success rate. That kind of thing, but there's no adjustments that are obvious in there at least. And that software also has its bugs. And as I mentioned in the Datron video, that Batronics programmer, it's expensive. You can still buy the thing, and it's really expensive. And you think for a really expensive programmer, um, the software would be good. And it's not. It's, it's not good. And it's really disappointing. So I'd actually like to get a decent EPROM programmer, which is supported on Mac. And allow me to write, uh, as long as you can do a 2732, uh, two, you know, that's the most common one you come across. And so the 2532 is um, also not supported on Batronics. But what I used that, this thing here for was to do the um, pin swap over. So I can program a 2532 with a 2732 setup. That's what that's all about. I probably didn't elaborate on that enough. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a pain. Rubbish, rubbish software is just what lets it down. It's incredible, really. Um, and I've also got the TL866 version 2. Well, TL866 2, if you want to call it that. And I've got one of those. I purchased that originally because I needed to program a display driver IC for the HP or Agilent E3646A, I think it was. As power supplies, I did repairs on. I did a few of those, um, and one of them had a blown driver, well, display. Um, yeah, the actual chip on the display was blown. Had some. I can't remember what exactly the faults were now, but the um, I had to reprogram the new IC for that. I think I had a power supply problem on that board. It was something short out, and it blew that chip. And I managed to find a chip. Someone had documented before a, a compatible alternative, and so I got one of those, and I got that programmer to program that chip, and that got that power supply working again. So I did do a video on that at the time. You can use that, but only with command line. Yeah, so that's not somewhere we want to go. You know, I like to have graphical user interface so I can see what it's doing. I don't like command line stuff. It kind of drives me nuts. I don't remember the commands either. I don't remember stuff like that. I just don't remember it. Always have to look it up and copy paste. Yeah, so the TR862 is, well, 2 plus, as mentioned. Um, it's a good little programmer, but it can't do many EPROMs. There are older versions which can do EPROMs, but that one can't because of the voltages that are involved. It doesn't provide enough voltage to program an EPROM, like 25 volts, can't do that, I think. I think you can add up to 19 volts, so even a 21 volts device you probably may not have success with. Um, yeah, well Andy, if someone does do a, a graphical interface for for the uh, TO8662 on Mac, that'd be brilliant, you know. It's beyond what I could do. I've done software for Mac before many years ago, but I haven't really done it. A long time and especially some of that I mean I could maybe sit down and reverse engineer the codes and and the, and the data transfer stuff and maybe do it but I'm not my right to do it <laughs> you know um, but if someone else wants to do it, it'd be great you know it'd be nice to have a Mac version which works for that um, although I don't use it much the sort of thing I just use occasionally and probably the next time I go to use that programmer it'll be obsolete 
that's how much I do e form programming and, and flash programming that sort of stuff I don't do it much so even on the Mac stuff I don't, I don't tend to go around having to re reflash them like um, there's the guy Northridge Fix I don't know if you guys have seen him he does a lot of um, consumer repairs mostly computers and laptops um, and like phones and tablets stuff like that he does a lot of things like that Xboxes or game console stuff like that he does a lot of repair videos like that and his channel has actually grown enormously he wasn't that long ago like a few months ago he had less subscribers than I've got and now he's got over 40,000 so he's doing really well so if you haven't seen that channel we might be going to have a look too but he does a lot of things like reflashing the BIOS chips on the MacBooks you know where they've got a password protection on that sort of thing you know so the boot password you can, you can remove that and that's what I used that program for which is another thing I could use that program for too same thing if I need to use the command line yeah yeah it's a very good programmer does a lot I've got all the various adapters for the program I've got, I've got as I always do unless I can't afford it um, I'll get the biggest option as I can so I've got all the various adapters that go with it to program in different chips you know so it's, it's got the ZIF socket on top and it's put the various adapters in for different size chips um, so I've got the whole set for that the biggest set so it costs a fair bit of money but um, I've got it so that's the thing with doing like, updates to computers as well you know you gradually update away from things which work so it's quite nice as well to keep an older computer around which hasn't been updated because <laughs> at least you know it will work for the next time you go to use it Oh yeah, use them yet. Yeah. yeah, that's right, reprogram the EFI firmware. Um, I have looked at it, I've actually gone in, and I think I've actually done it once. Did I do a video on it? I think I might have done actually. I wonder if I've done a video on the EFI firmware thing. Let me have a look now, I'm wondering if I have. Yeah, I have, I've done a video on the EFI firmware. I've done that as well. Um, That was in the last year, back in November, I did that video. So, yeah. That's what you use yours for mostly. So, what do you use it for mostly? Is it resetting the password or is it for just doing other stuff like maybe refashioning to make sure it's not corrupted? Andy, I'm also I'm talking to you. Um, graphics cards as well oh, okay yeah that's what I suppose you can get PC graphics cards and refresh them for Mac can't you oh heading off Andy okay thanks mate Andy Mouse oh the password not booting yeah fast flashing quite a bit I imagine it's what they're mostly used for really But it's quite nice having something which can do a lot of different chips and it's got a lot of things built into it already. I mean, I've only used it once and um, it looked pretty good when I looked at, looked at it then. Well, I've used it twice obviously because of that but, uh, um, EFI thing as well. So I've used it a couple of times probably. Not used it much. Um, actually, I'll show you. Let's put this up. So here's my box of, although I've called it EEPROM, it should really be programmers. Um, so here's my Batronics in there. So I've got the 32, is it? BX32 is the one I've got. And there's my TO862 Plus. Yeah, that way up. And here's all the various adapters in there. Box of adapters. We came with that. And here is Epon Eraser, UV Eraser. And here's my old programmer. Here we go. EPP2 it's called. This one I used to use, doing EPROMs. But it's a um, parallel port connection kind of thing, you know. 
It used to work okay. So it's a shame it's just no longer supported. And then we've got AVR ISP Mark II. So it's the clone. This actually came from Ian Johnston. I don't know if he's still here. He's, he's commented on him quite a while. He maybe left again. But this actually came from him. He gave it to me. He sent it to me at no cost. And I was doing the reviews on this thing. The PDVS2 Mini. All right. Eight, uh, eight volt. Ten volt reference. Ten volt DC reference. So I've done videos on this. And um, yeah, there's a firmware update for this. So I, um, I used this programmer. Which Ian sent me to reprogram the, the flash on that one. Um, and what else is in there? Got something else? I also got one of these things, Sega. Although it's a fake Sega, it's not a real one. J tag thing. Um, never used it. One day I'll actually have to give it a go. But it's got like a USB port on that side to power it from the machine. But yeah, I'll have to figure this out one day. Never used it. I thought I'd get it because it looked interesting and I thought I might be using it for something. Yeah, so that's my programmer box. Which is a bit messy. Arts programmer, that's right. Arts, yeah. So that's what I used to use for the reprom. So when I used to do CB radio modifications, but I still kind of do. But when I used to do conversion boards for them, just um, using binary conversions using EPROMs, um, it's kind of old tech now. And I, I was a bit late to the party with that, I suppose. And um, I'd use that to program EPROMs for those conversions. So. What we chat to catch up with? Used to take up archives of old ROM images for industrial things. Okay. Fast chip series sets is what I'm using it for. Um, ISP, that's good, yeah. Yeah, 822. Is it 82? 8622? 8662? I don't bloody Yeah, the big program. Oh, yeah. Made a JTAG serial interface years ago to program cable boxes. All oh, right. Data man. Oh, yeah. When I was younger, I really wanted to get a data man. You know, I really wanted to get one of those things. I thought they were awesome. You know, um, probably still can get them, actually. You know, someone's probably selling one somewhere. Actually, let's have a look out of curiosity, see if we can find one, shall we? Let's have a look. There may be one for sale. But those are, it relies on you putting in the data in manually, doesn't it? You have to type it all in by hand, and then you can load it from memory or something, is that right? There we go, data man, it's on eBay. Have you got one on eBay? Let's pop this window out. Let's have a look up here, top screen. Here we go. Let's make the screen a bigger as well as you can see a bit easier. Here you go. Data van. See, these are still pretty expensive, like 600 bucks. That's slightly better. <laughs> 430. But yeah, it would be, um, would be nice. Those other stuff as well. I'm not interested in it. 40 pen ISP. It's fairly new that one. Hmm. So it might be an option actually to even get some of those, but I still want to spend 500 bucks on something which I use occasionally. That's a lot of money, you know. 288, it's looking more better. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Angie. Catch you later, mate. UXP48. Yeah, you reckon that's what was that? Is that that one there? Oh, but these ones, these are the ones I used to be sort of drooling over. This thing here. 
This one I really like, like the idea of getting one of these ones, these S fours. But they're so out of date now. Um if we L V. Is this one you're meaning, the forty eight, this one here? Scanners, but what was the one I was tempted by? I saw just now, where was that one gone? Two eighty eight. Tempted by this one. Hey, we'll ship. Doesn't say how much it's going to cost, though. Mm. <laughs> I do want to get another Epron program because I don't want to rely on this Detronics one. Sorry, Batronics one. Um, because I'm not happy with it. The software is just so flaky. So I'd rather get something whilst you can still get Epron programmers rather than the newer stuff. Um, yeah, I know. It's, it's just expensive, though, isn't it? That's a 40 pin. I never do 32 pin, 20. I think 32 pin I've done once. Usually it's 24 pin stuff I'm working on when I'm doing the EPROM, so I don't need that many pins. Buying what you see in photos, eh? Certainly tempted by it. Hmm, watch list. For that LV is basically the same. Okay. So that is this thing here. So I haven't researched these at all. I just remember the old data main ones, the original ones, the S4s, which is what I was really drooling over when I was younger. Really wanted one of those. Yeah, it's on the back. Yeah, parallel port. So that's the problem, isn't it? You got to do the conversion of parallel. So at least the other one's got USB connection, but then you still need the software for it, whether that uses. That'd be the next problem. I mean, also, then you got to, you know, if you kind of put that money into it, you need to make sure it's going to program the things you want as well. Because you've got these more modern ones like this, but will it do the chip? I mean, sometimes I don't even say what they'll program. I mean, this is the one I've got, right? The BX32P. Well, it's 400 bucks plus shipping, but the software's rubbish. So, you know, yeah. No, no untested years. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyway. UXP is USB. Who was that one there? I thought I saw UXP just now. Oh my. I thought I saw it. Industrial barcode reader. Do I need one of those? It's probably when you start browsing things. Oh, that'd be cool. I'd call it F. Oh, no, don't need one. Okay, so that's always a bunch of other stuff. I thought I saw that UXP. I thought I did. Am I missing it? No. But this one here has got the. Um, that's USB anyway, says it is. Um, yeah, I was trying to think, GB, whether I've seen that video or not from Julian. I probably have. I know I have seen some stuff. Um, maybe a while ago. I know I've looked around. But yeah, trying to find something which can program EPROMs. Like, ideally, there's something can do a 2532. Know, that kind of era, um, so I can go back to that age because that's some sort of stuff I'm working on. Is that age? So needing to the program stuff of that age is quite important. 
but unfortunately it means usually the programmer has to be of that age as well. Yeah. UXP. Is that data main UXP? I mean, I thought I saw UXP, but maybe I saw something else. That's a datas. That's not what was it? No, delete that. Delete that bit. UXP connectors. No, that's not what was it? No. Nah. That's something else. What am I supposed to be looking for? RTA and INF. RT eight oh nine F and H. Okay, that's all right. Really? It doesn't I've got enough pins on it. Is it because it uses enters? I don't know, it doesn't seem to be enough pins to do that. I don't know, maybe it's a set of adapter system it uses, is it? I'm not sure. I have to research this. Hmm. Drunk shopping on eBay? No, I'm not drunk. Just shopping. So, what's the H look like? Those aren't expensive either. Okay, this one's got more pins on it. And a whole stack of adapters and stuff. Shows serial port. That shows USB. This is both connections, is it? Must be universal. Oh, that's it. It's got heaps. So that's very tempting. Is there a device list? Let's go further. Software download. Uh, I want to see a device list. I mean, what I really like to find is an even program which works on Mac. Now, I'd have to mess around with using a PC, you know, because that's always a pain. Obviously, this is PC software, but it's a small sacrifice to make if it's suitable. You know, it's not ideal, but it's all right. Oh, interesting. looks pretty capable doesn't it but again I want to see a device this thing get the software whoa okay is that gonna really what the hell is this that's it's not actually a link Yeah, I have to look into these. I'll make a note of that. Look at this one. This one, say. I'm skewing past it too much. 
Doesn't zoom in too far. Hold on. Doesn't say much. Right, next one. Let's see what Alan says. Because I do have a bunch of adapters, so I probably don't need the adapters to go with it, or at least not a lot of them. Most of them I need. Don't see it mentioning EPROM though. There's a bunch of other stuff. Hmm. I'm sure it'll be listed somewhere. So is that the program you've got as well, is it? Try different listing. Different listing. Sometimes I list them in the listings, don't I? So that's not a link. <laughs> Same one as before. Alright, do you guys want to really watch what is shopping eBay? <laughs> Uh, I'm kind of hoping to find a link which lists the value parts. You got the F for the H works the same. So what's the difference between the F and the H then? Apart from sizing. And the H without a whole bunch of adapters is still, you know, two hundred and sixty odd bucks. So it must be some kind of significant difference between the two. Because there is a big difference. I mean, the, the F is much cheaper. Now seventy-five for free shipping. They are being, I've been inclined to try and get this from like AliExpress or Banggood or something like that because then I can use the um, the affiliate links as well and try and get some extra income from that as well by having other people buy them, hopefully. It says 25 and 26 series SPI flash, but yeah, that's, that's different. It's not the same as the 2532s EPROMs. Yes, yeah, AliExpress, yeah. It wouldn't surprise me if it is. Yeah, I'll have to research these more anyway. I'll leave I'll, I'll those here for the time being. And I'll look at them later on. I'm always looking out for new tools. New tools are always good. Right. If you use the expansion board, whereas the other one's got a full size, yeah. Yeah. Can I see it? Mm, yeah, I think I'll probably go for more of. I prefer full size sockets, so this goes straight to the front. Yeah. Anyway, that's something I have to look into. I'll, I'll research it. Thanks for that. I'll look into it and see if it's suitable. See if there's a job for me. But yeah, seeing with doing it's old EPROMs, you know, trying to find something which will do them and work without being a bit flaky, you know, that's always hard. Right, um, I think we're done really. I should probably go and spend some time with my wife and maybe go and cut the grass and keep her happy. Um, yeah, I should do that. And go and have a drink actually. It's almost time for lunch too. So, thanks to everyone dropping by and having a look and sharing some time and having a chat in the chat and that sort of stuff. And anyone that wants to, that's watching this video later on after I've done the live stream. And watching the recorded video, 
Um, thanks for dropping by and have a chat down in the comments below. And make sure you subscribe if you're not already subscribed and give us a thumbs up if you like the video. All that usual stuff and check out the links at the end of the video which will be over here somewhere or maybe there. That kind of stuff. And um, yeah, look at more stuff. Watch more repairs or whatever. Reviews. Okay, thanks Anonymous. I'll, I'll have a look at that. Um, right, so I think we're done. So I might do another live stream at some point. We'll see how we go. Um, and I'm sure I'm forgetting something. Oh, I don't know. Memory's going. These are mumbles. <laughs> I'll catch you all later. Thanks a lot. See you next time.